title of national champions of college football has been claimed over the years by many of the great universities of the country. These teams are now part of the history of the game. But this season's national champion has yet to be decided. Notre Dame was the nation's top team last year, and they held that ranking late into the season. Until the University of Miami brought down the Fighting Irish with a convincing 27-10 win that elevated the once beaten Hurricanes to a, well, number two ranking in the national polls. The Crimson Tide of Alabama is the nation's seventh ranked team. They feature a linebacker who most likely will be the first player picked in the upcoming NFL draft. Keith McCants, a junior, has what many scouts see as a potential to be the next Lawrence Taylor. Tonight from the Superdome, a game that could help decide the national championship, the U.S. f and Sugar Bowl. In New Orleans, Louisiana, sellout crowd, 76,000. The Miami Hurricanes and the Alabama Crimson Tide. It'll be wild here this evening, a partisan Alabama crowd, because they are the tri-champions of the Southeast Conference, and, well, it'll be heavily partisan towards Alabama. But in any event, good game. We're glad you're with us. We feel this game could have a major influence on a national obsession. Who is number one? The Miami Hurricanes, of course, are ranked number two. They feel going into tonight, they'll be thinking a little bit about what's going on in the Orange Bowl, where Notre Dame is taking on number one ranked Colorado, and Notre Dame favored over Colorado. And should Miami win tonight, Notre Dame beat Colorado, then Miami feels they have a legitimate claim on the national championship. And of course, first of all, they have to get by Alabama. And we are glad you're with us. Your Monday night crew is reconvened for your viewing pleasure. That, of course, means Frank and Al and Dan and Al. When you look at this Miami team, well, if it should eventuate, like we said, I think it would be a very legitimate claim on number one. This is a great football team. There is no question that they feel, whether they win or lose tonight, they should be the team of the decade, and why not? This is a team that won only 38% of its games in the 1970s, but 83% in the 1980s. When you think about Miami, the names, of course, that come to mind in recent years, Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, Benny Testaverde, Steve Walsh, a great recent quarterback tradition. They've got a good one right now in Craig Erickson. But the difference for Miami, I think, is defense. They are number one in the nation defensively. They allow only nine points a game. And as you take a look at the Miami Hurricanes coming out onto the field here at the Superdome, this is a team so tough against the run that the opposition averaged less than two yards per carry this season. If they turn in that sort of performance tonight, they will win, and they are favored to win by nine. They're big favorites here, Dan. So what does Alabama have to do, Alabama being number seven in the country, to win this game tonight? Well, first of all, I think they hope that Miami plays with the same enthusiasm with which they walked onto the field. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, I think that's the Hurricanes' way of responding to what is obviously not a neutral site. This is very pro-Alabama, and the Tide will need all the help they can get tonight. From an athletic standpoint, I don't think there's a college team in the country that can compare to the University of Miami. So what's Alabama going to have to do? Well, first of all, they're going to have to say, take some chances offensively and defensively. They're probably going to have to blitz more than they're used to doing to try to pressure the Kane offense. And secondly, they're probably going to have to throw the ball a little more than they would like. And to do so effectively, they have to protect their quarterback, Gary Hollingsworth, against the finest front four in college football. Can they do it? Can they use this crowd? It'll be an uphill battle for the tie tonight. We'll return to the Superdome here in New Orleans for the U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl and a wild crowd right after this. The U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl brought to you by U.S. F&G. All across this country, U.S. F&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. U.S. F&G covers the U.S.A by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. By Cotton Incorporated for America's cotton growers. Cotton, the fabric of our lives. And by Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight.
This voyage is for Pepsi drinkers everywhere. There's a whole other world out there. Diet Coke. Discover the one calorie real cola taste worth leaving Pepsi for. One giant sip for mankind. In the 80s, Honda became known for its reliable, feature-filled cars. You ready, Dad? I love this car. But today, the 90s begin with the new Geo Prism. The quality sedan with 16-valve performance, Prism is designed for years of carefree driving with more of the features and little extras that make life easier. So you know you'll be friends for a long time. Get to know the new Geo Prism at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Getting to know you. Alabama won the toss. They've deferred the choice until the second half. Miami will receive the kickoff in just a moment. And incidentally, the coin used in today's opening toss was a silver dollar commemorating the bicentennial of Congress provided by the U.S. Mint. It is being used as the official coin of the 1989-90 postseason. Lynn Swan will be uh, patrolling the sidelines tonight. What's shaking down there, Swanee? Well, Al, we know how important this game is to Miami for their hopes for a national championship. But on a more personal level, it's equally as important to the head coach, Bill Curry. He's been in Alabama for three years with a 26-9 record, but hasn't had the overwhelming support of the alumni and fans, probably because in those nine losses, there have been three to Auburn. And it's a fierce interstate rival with the winner usually giving the edge in recruiting. And you know in any major college football program, getting the in-state blue-chip football players is critical to being competitive. So he really wants to win this to get that support on his side. But immediately... The support is here as this stands is full of the crimson and white colors of this Alabama football team. Al? I would have to estimate, Lynn, that uh, the crowd is probably 4-1 to one. Alabama. Perhaps uh, 12 to 15,000 Miami faithful and about 60,000 rooting for the Crimson Tide. And there are some of the orange who have made their way from the Sunshine State to New Orleans as we get set for the USF&G Sugar Bowl. Philip Doyle to kick off for Alabama. Alex Johnson and Randall Hill back to receive for second-ranked Miami. Hill takes it at the 12. Out past the 30. And Hill out to the 37-yard line, and Miami will take over there, and it's Philip Doyle who kicked off, who runs him out of bounds. Miami, a very effusive team, and they really show their emotions. You saw Hill at the end of that play. You'll see Dawkins do that all the time in the end zone. And as we take a look at the Miami offense, Craig Erickson and his numbers. He missed action in the middle of the season with a broken knuckle on his throwing hand. Wesley Carroll is back after a shoulder injury kept him out of the Notre Dame game. Conley is the sole setback, and there are the guys up front. From the 35-yard line, it's going to be tough for Miami to run its plays tonight with the team here. Conley is swarmed under. Back of the line of scrimmage, the charge is led by Willie Wyatt, number 98. Wyatt is one guy to keep an eye on. He is in the middle, flanked by Thornton and Rayum. But, of course, the big man is number 86, Keith McCants, who's a junior, but he could declare himself eligible for the NFL draft. He has not stated officially whether he will or not. Mangum and Thomas are the corners. Mangum is outstanding. And the rest of the secondary. Second down and 10 from the 34-yard line. To the short side of the field, the catch is made by Conley, and he's run out of bounds at about the 38 by Spencer Hammond, the outside linebacker, number 44. If Miami has any problems tonight, it would be over the left side of their offensive line where Mike Sullivan was not expected to play at left tackle. He is perhaps their best offensive lineman. Bad ankle, missed a couple of games, hurt it on Wednesday, but he is trying to go. 
I talked to him on the field. He said, I'm going to give it a go, at least that first series. So we'll box into 79. On third and nine, Erickson throws out of bounds intended for Carroll, who looks for a flag and doesn't get it. The pressure that time put on by McCants as the All-American came in on a blitz. Forced Erickson to release. That's Charles Gardner and McCants coming off the field as the Alabama defense does its job, and we isolate on McCants. And we talked earlier about his chances of possibly being the first guy taken in the draft next year, and a very effective job of pass protecting by Luis Cristobal, the left guard, who a good strike into the upper body of McCants and put him on the ground. Tim Kalal to boot it away for Miami. Gene Jelk. And the kick may have been deflected. A very poor kick, bouncing near midfield, taking a Miami hop, and it's down to the Alabama 43-yard line. Mike Smith might have gotten a hand on it. Well, if he didn't get a hand on it, it went straight up in the air. Let's take a look at it from behind. See number nine, Smith come up there, and boy, it's, it's really impossible to tell. But by the trajectory of the ball, which went straight up, you almost have to assume that he got a finger on it. Boy, that's that's awful close to call. That's too close for me to call. Oh, he not sensed, Mike Smith. He sensed that he might have that block, and perhaps he just pulled up on it. Out of the shotgun, this is Saran Stacy, who is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Richard Newbill, the outside linebacker, making the tackle. A lot of good stories, which we'll get into in regard to Alabama, many of them involving this man, Gary Hollingsworth, who emerged and came from nowhere to become probably Alabama's most valuable player. And without a huddle, here they come to the line on second down and 10. From the 42-yard line, the fake inside handoff and a little toss out to the tight end, Lamont Russell, who takes it out to the 48-yard line. He is stopped by Ryan McNeil. Bill Curry was telling us yesterday Alabama could play all night without a huddle if they had to. And they're beginning that way right now with no huddle again here on third down and four. Hollingsworth out of the gun from the 48-yard line. And a little roll to the right, has time, but then he underthrows the intended receiver. Marco Battle trying to make it look like a catch, but the officials aren't fooled, and Alabama has to kick. The reason Alabama can do that is, number one, that Gary Collins, Hollingsworth is a very bright young quarterback. He reads defenses. He knows this offense so well that they don't have to get the calls into him. He does it all on his own, as you can see, underthrows there. But also, Bill Curry would like to pressure Miami's number one defense of the nation. Keep them coming after the pass. Wear them down a little bit, and then perhaps they won't be as effective later in the game. Bill Smith to punt. Hurricanes trying to set up a return as Pee Wee Smith takes it at the 15-yard line and gets buried at the 16. So a spirited beginning, a 38-yard kick, a three-yard return. We play two minutes and 21 seconds in the opening quarter of the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Miami, and Alabama. There is a new dimension for those who love to drive. It is long and sleek, smooth yet precise, designed for comfort, built for the road, shaped by the wind. Proven on the track. Introducing Lumina, the adult sport coupe. When it comes to new dimensions in performance, nobody's winning like. The heartbeat of America, that's the Finally, a cordless drill that just won't quit. The Black & Decker Univolt. With more torque than its leading competitor and more than 100 watts out of power. Only one thing stops the Univolt. <laughs> The industrial strength Black & Decker Univolt. Perfection, where there's nothing new under the sun, but under the ground. This family is one long smorgasbord. Kevin Bacon, Tremors, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, January 19th at theaters everywhere. Happy New Year, America. I'm Joan London, and on behalf of everyone at Good Morning America, I'd like to wish you and your family a safe and happy 1990s. Craig Erickson having a fine season, and he missed us some time during the middle of the year. And there's a look at the uh, the knuckle, and you can still see the bulge there. 
And that cost him three starts in 1989. A little calcium, wouldn't you say, Dan has developed there? Well, he's also still got a pin in that knuckle that won't be removed until sometime this offseason. He goes back to pass on first down from the 17 and hits Carroll, who is very close to a first down. He is tackled by Charles Gardner out at the 27-yard line. Erickson has got the passing arm back again, and the hand is not bothering him as much as it did in the past. He's throwing the spiral once again, and you can see he's right on target to Wesley Carroll. Carroll missed the Notre Dame game, and they moved the receivers around a little bit. They brought Dale Dawkins and played what they call the tailback position, where Carroll ordinarily is, and Dawkins had a great game. Two fine receivers, Dawkins and Carroll. And Carroll gets the first down. It is a first down. As Frank mentioned, they list him as a tailback, but it's really a, a one-back offense with three wide receivers. And right now, Stephen McGuire, the freshman from Brooklyn, New York, who has emerged in the second half of the season, is in as the sole running back. He and Leonard Conley will share time at that spot. First down from the 27-yard line. Here's McGuire to the short side of the field. And takes it out past the 30 to about the 32-yard line where Ephraim Thomas comes up to make the tackle. Meanwhile, if you're just getting home in the Hall of Fame Bowl, Auburn beat Ohio State today. And Illinois knocked off Virginia by 10 in the Florida Citrus Bowl. In Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, Tennessee was a victor over Arkansas. Florida State routes Nebraska by 24 in the Fiesta Bowl. SC knocks off Michigan in the Rose Bowl by seven. And the whistle has blown this play dead as McCann comes charging in, but the whistle had blown, stopping the play before its inception. Referee tonight is John Nealon, and he'll tell us about it. Illegal procedure against the Hurricane. Bill Curry in his third season at Alabama. With the clock operator put four seconds back on the clock. Four seconds. And on the right, Dennis Erickson. And you'll recall he took over when Jimmy Johnson got the job at Dallas after Jerry Jones had purchased the team. Johnson going to the NFL, and they brought Erickson in from Washington State. And he finishes the regular season with a mark of 10 and 1. Pretty illustrious line of coaches he followed. Through the 80s, of course, it was Howard Schnellenberger there to get him started at the beginning of the decade, and then Johnson with great success. Erickson throwing and finding the seam at the 42-yard line is Lamar Thomas, and he gets tackled at the 40. Picking up the first down, John Mangum and Lee Osmond converge on the stop, and that's a 13-yard pickup. When there's a formation you'll see a lot by Miami. They call it the trips formation. It's a fairly common. See the three receivers to this side of the field. Bill Curry was telling us they fear the short guy to the inside, but this time it's Thomas who makes the break into the inside from the outside position. And when you flood the field that way with three receivers, you're throwing the defense into man coverage. From the 40-yard line, this is Alex Johnson getting into Alabama territory, and he has a first down at the 41, stopped by Willie Wyatt. That's a 19-yard game for the man who would be number three on the depth chart at running back. But he had a fine average coming into tonight, and he perhaps has the best speed of the single setback that Miami uses, and he came close to popping that, but good move in the sidelines to get the first down deep in Alabama territory. When you're only 5'9", 170, Frank. You better have it, huh? <laughs> yeah, you better have some speed. First down, Hurricanes from the 41-yard line. Erickson has a lot of time and going deep, and it's knocked down. Intended for Thomas and broken up by Ephraim Thomas. Intended for Lamar Thomas. Any question about the arm of Craig Erickson? He erased that. Lamar Thomas, of course, alternates over in the left side of Randall Hill. Perhaps doesn't have the speed of the Randall Hill, but he had it for a moment. And well played by Ephraim Thomas, a junior from Long Beach, California. And we have a wide assortment of cities and states represented on this Miami squad. Second and 10 at the 41-yard line. And this is Johnson picking up about three from a scuffle. 
pickup of about three to the 38 yard line. What's amazing, there's been so much going on already. I look up at the clock, they've only played three minutes and 45 seconds. Now they put four seconds back on it. <laughs> Third down and seven at the 38 yard line. Erickson sending three receivers out to the left. And looking that way and throwing. And does he have the first down? Hill makes the catch. But Ephraim Thomas comes up to bump him back and prevent a first down. Well, this is two big-time plays on the same series by Ephraim Thomas. We saw the coverage on the long fly pattern to Lamar Thomas, where he plays it beautifully and knocks it away. And now just as good an open field tackle as you're going to see. Now look at the catch. Now you look at there, you say there's no way that Hill isn't going to pick up the first down. Tremendous tackle by Thomas. Carlos Huerta now to attempt a 49-yard field goal. The ball spotted at the 39-yard line. His longest of the year is 52, but this one is no good. It has the distance, but is wide. with three first downs on that drive, but then Huerta is wide on an attempt from 49, and so Alabama will get it. A scoreless first quarter with 10-08 remaining in the period. In the midday zone. Here, nothing, nothing, early first period. Alabama from the 32-yard line. Hollingsworth throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Prince Wimbley. They, they like to move the ball around. Uh, for the most part, going to their tight ends and their running backs. And uh, to this point in the game, Alabama continuing to go without a huddle. Well, and also, I think you're seeing some of the first down, Alabama going to the shotgun. I think they're making a statement about how well they think they can run the ball against Miami. As we mentioned, Miami limiting their opponents to less than two yards per rush. The blitz, he gets it away to Saran Stacy. And then he gets swarmed under out of the 34-yard line. The first man to hit him was Maurice Crum, and then all of his pals joined in. And Bernard Clark among those. Offensively, Stacy and Turner, the starting running back, Sanderson, and battle the wideouts. Russell, the tight end, 81, their top receiver. And the offensive line, Chapman, a real good one, number 70, the right tackle. Third down and eight from the 34-yard line. Hollingsworth has it intercepted at the 48-yard line by Farms, but there's a penalty marker as Farms brings it back to the Crimson Tide 41 and another flag. So two separate flags on the play. I'll be surprised if we don't get some sort of a defensive holding call against Miami. Charles Farms makes the interception on a ball that at first glance appears to be seriously overthrown. But I think the real I think the real the reason that it was overthrown is that the Alabama receiver was held and detained along the way. Both penalties against the hurricane. <laughs> Left over from the Republican convention, no doubt. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. There's Saran Stacy going out, and, and there, as I believe, yeah, we're going to get the defensive oh. holding call. That's Maurice Crum. And here's the late hit. Cortez Kennedy coming in, and whoa, he slams a good one. So we're going to have dual personal fouls against Alabama, but it's the holding call against Maurice Crum that's going to negate the interception by Charles Farms. And there was no question that Crum really locked up with Saran Stacy as he came out of the Alabama backfield, and he was the intended receiver of Hollingsworth. So when all is said and done, First and 10, Alabama at the 41. Pegues, Maryland, Kennedy's great, number 96. And Greg Mark with 15 and a half sacks. There are your linebackers. Clark, the key man in the middle. 
and the excellent Miami secondary, all part of the country's number one defense. What does that mean? It means they yielded fewest yards per game of any team in the country this year. Inside handoff goes to Kevin Turner, who picks up about three, taking it to the 38. It'll be second down and seven for Alabama. And I think this is a wise move, guys, by Alabama by going to the spread formation and going to the shotgun on first down because they really don't have the muscle and the manpower up front to remove the Miami defensive line from the line of scrimmage and effectively sit there in, a, in an eye formation and jam the ball down their throat. They're not going to do it. This is their only chance of winning this game. I hate the word finesse, but uh, it's a good way to describe their offense. They mix it up, run, pass, short pass, draw. Here's an underneath handoff to Turner, and he takes it to the 34-yard line. He comes up about three yards short of the first down. Jimmy Jones in on the tackle. Turner, a junior from Prattville, Alabama. Good receiver. They like to throw to him a lot. In fact, he's their second leading receiver behind the tight end, Russell. Houston and Stacy are now the running backs in this shotgun set with Hollingsworth. On third and three from the 34. Hollingsworth throwing for the far side, but out of bounds was Craig Sanderson making the catch, but clearly on the strike. And so fourth down for the Crimson Tide at the 34-yard line. And Philip Doyle, who had an outstanding season, both teams with terrific place kickers. Doyle will line up to attempt this one from the 41, so a 51-yard attempt for Philip Doyle. And the kick is wide. Boy, and it looked long enough as well, did yep. it not? Hooked it a little bit too much. Started to die at the end. I think it had the distance, but hooks wide, as did Huerta's kick. An errant kick by the Miami kicker from 49. This one missing from 51. Just missing. 8.03 to go in the quarter. If you know Tucker, you know why he drives a Z24. Tucker gave up a fancy job to open up his own place. Strictly Cajun, no ties allowed. And he's got a philosophy that applies to his multi-port V6 Cavalier Z24 as well as his gumbo. If it doesn't burn, it ain't hot. The heartbeat of America. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. That's today, Chevrolet. Shearson Lehman Hutton, where we stand, the 90s. In this decade, we believe the United States will become a nation of savers and Japan a nation of spenders. For the first time in our history, air will get cleaner rather than dirtier. And biotechnology will produce advances greater than the discovery of penicillin. What will these unprecedented events mean to you? Talk with us. Shearson Lehman Hutton. Leadership by example. My pain is at the bottom of my elbow. It's throbbing. The more you twist, the more the pain hurts. When I get a pain like that, I will take aspirin. Today, Richard Mazzancini is trying extra-strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? The pain is gone. It's, it's great. It doesn't hurt. It feels fluid. I'm convinced I'm going to be a gel cap user. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your cold this winter, now try Tylenol cold medication. Well, there he is, Keith McCants, the great linebacker. Lawrence Taylor was quoted the other day as saying that the, the 80s was the Taylor decade and the 90s will be the McCants decade in the NFL. From the 34-yard line, here's Erickson back to throw. Hits Carroll. There's a marker down. Carroll at the 48 of Alabama, and Ephraim Thomas makes the tackle. Alabama, I believe, had 12 men on the field. They were trying to scramble one off, and he did not get off before the ball was snapped. Could have been George Teague, number 13, trying to get that off the field. Substitution infraction on Alabama. Decline. First down. Looked like Carroll went off the field uh, in the arms of a couple of the Miami trainers, and he's clearly shaken up after that reception. But his catch puts Miami in Alabama territory. Now, remember, he's the guy who missed the Notre Dame game because of that shoulder problem. 
And out he comes here. Pee Wee Smith takes his place at the 48-yard line. Here goes Conley to the outside, turning the corner. And then met head-on by Ephraim Thomas, who's been involved in a lot of this action. But Thomas has now paid the price. And Conley begins to limp away. But Thomas really shaken up after that brutal hit. And Thomas still down. Let's take a look at it at regular speed. And, and Al, your call is right on. Ephraim Thomas just puts the shoulder shoulder to shoulder. And Thomas still down on the ground. His left shoulder appears to have really borne the brunt of that shot. And... and Ephraim Thomas remains down. You know, Kami only goes uh, 170 pounds, another five foot nine, but he plays so big. Very tough is the way they characterize their single setback and quite a collision there with Ephraim Thomas. Now he's up and I think he's returning to the universe. Well, you think that we're talking about that uh, there's still seven and a half minutes left in the first quarter. How about Ephraim Thomas? This guy, there's some guys that play an entire game and don't have as much to do being involved around the ball as Thomas has here in the first quarter. A good collision with the helmets and the left shoulder. And Changed a little paint there, didn't they? Well, really, it's uh, hopefully, yeah, they did exchange a little <laughs> paint, to quote a, a colleague of ours. But uh, you can hope that it really was the collision of the helmets and he's just dazed and not the oh, shoulder no. injury. That'll allow him to come back. He looks familiar, doesn't he? Yes, sir. He has already been credited with five of Alabama's 11 tackles, but off he comes for the moment. He's been a hawk around the ball all night. Miami at the 45-yard line, second down and seven. No score, first quarter, George Teague taking Thomas's play. 7.42 to play in the period. Erickson on a roll, buying time, and then throwing, and the catch is made at the 32-yard line by Randy Bethel. Uh, what a great throw by Erickson. Looking, looking, looking as he spread it out, and finally coming up with Bethel, the best of the tight ends are receiving for Miami, but Erickson picking him up, wrapped as a second or even a third receiver, crossing completely across the field. Little sprint to the right. Now watch this. This is all arms. And bang, he finds Bethel right over the middle, right between two defenders, and just a great pass by Erickson. On first down, McGuire fights his way down to the 20-yard line, picking up about six. It'll be second and four. McCants and Webb converge on the tackle. Miami operating almost exclusively out of that trip formation. Three wide receivers to one side of the field. They dictate to the defense when they do that. You can't play zone coverage when you have three wide receivers to one side of the field. And then a lot of times they'll bring a Carroll out of the backfield and actually put four wide receivers to one side of the field. That's a case where the offense dictates to the defense. Second and three. Here's trip to the left is uh, Conley takes it, picks up the first down, and gets to the 15-yard line, loses the ball, but they're going to whistle it dead. Now, when you see the official still winding his arm, mm -hmm. he's saying the play is down, inbounds, keep the game clock moving. And it's a first down as he takes it to the 15-yard line, which, of course, the college ball stops the clock there. The parade of animals, the ducks and the elephants, they're all over this field. A lot of color, a lot of atmosphere here. I guess, do we throw it up to the replay booth? Because clearly, that's a fumble all the way. You can see, you can see that thing pop out, and George Teague causes that ball to come loose, and you can only imagine what the Alabama crowd just saw on the replay board here at the Superdome. Yeah, that's a fumble all the way, but no replay in college football. From the 15-yard line, McGuire, Inside the 10, and the freshman takes it down to the 9-yard line. Lee Osmond coming up to make the tackle. He really came on in the second half of the season. There are his numbers for the year. Steve McGuire, big night against Notre Dame. Actually, he really got healthy. He had a pulled muscle and a hip pointer early on and missed a lot of his first camp. Uh, an Alabama player is down on the field. But that's McCants. That's his McCants. Whoa. And a hush has come over the crowd here, which, as we mentioned before, solidly backing Alabama to the extent of about four to one, I would estimate. Kenny Wolf, our producer, is telling us he's got a shot of it down in the truck. Kenny, what do you got here? Here's McCants as he comes upfield. He's got the contain to the far side. Now he's thrown into a pursuit situation. 
Well, you can see where he's actually leg whipped by Spencer Hammond, his own outside linebacker. And he took a shot to the leg from Hammond, number 44, whose legs were flying through the air. McCants is up and walking off. Another look, that's McCants, top of your screen now. And that you can't tell if if it happened while he was up in the air and it was actually the blow from Hammond's legs or if he came down awkwardly and, and twisted something upon landing. As he's coming off, he's favoring the left leg. Well, this is the wrong place on the field to lose your enforcer. And Keith McCants, it, this guy is 6'5", 256 pounds, folks. 4540. And his spot taken by Rodney Helton. So what it means is my Alabama for the moment has lost McCants and Thomas. Two vital defensive cogs. A second and four. Here is McGuire breaking the tackle, but no. They say he was stopped at the eight-yard line. He was able to elude the grasp of Osmond, but after the play had been whistled dead. Well, I, this, I think that situation where you give Osmond uh, credit there, he turned him loose when he heard the whistle because he very nonchalantly just <laughs> said, okay, that's enough. And there's McCants on the sideline. We talked about McGuire, his size. He is a real horse. He goes about 216 pounds as freshman from Brooklyn. And you saw a moment ago they had blown the whistle and he still was able to pull loose. You see a lot of him down the line at Miami. Third and a long two from the seven-yard line. Erickson back to throw out of the end zone. Intended for Dale Dawkins, Osmond covering. And Miami is now 0 for 3 on third down conversion opportunities. Let's check in with Swanee. Lynn. Al McCants has just bruised his thigh. The doctor said it'll be okay. They're going to wrap it up. Thomas, of course, got dinged a little bit on the other side. It's not a real concussion. He's just dazed. He'll be back in the ball game in four or five minutes. But unfortunately, big players are coming out at the wrong time. And right now, Miami setting up to attempt a 25-yard field goal. Huerta with the ball to be spotted at the 15 at an angle to try to put Miami on the board. And contact is made. Oh, man. That'll Alabama. give him the first down. Yep. Major, major error. They had to talk Woo. about that in the defensive huddle. Stay on side. You know they were talking about it. Oh, that's clearly an Alabama offsides, and that will give Miami a first down inside the five-yard line. Lee Osmond, I believe. Right in the middle. That's number 42, Lee Osmond. And he just, just makes contact, Ooh. tries to get back. But the minute contact is made, ball. it's a dead play. Offside from the defense. First down. Well, you know, Dan, in a situation like that, when they huddle defensively, that's the first thing they say. A first down, stay on side. First down will give them a first. Or rather, offsides will give them a first. Well, these aren't professional players. These are college guys. This is a bowl environment, Frank, and it's tough to be too harsh on them, but you're right. That, that, it's tough to make a bigger penalty than that, and, of course, there is Keith McCants back in the game for Alabama. Miami with a first and goal from the three. Here's McGuire, and McGuire plows into the end zone for a touchdown. So the Alabama penalty proves very costly. It will cost them, assuming the conversion is good, at least four points. Mike Sullivan and Lewis Cristobal led the way for Miami as McGuire takes it in to put the Hurricanes on the board. Just tremendous blocking to the left side of the Miami Hurricane offense, and then a good, solid lead block up front by number 20, Crowell, and boy, they just stuffed it into the end zone. Weirta for the extra point. And with four minutes and 55 seconds to play in the first quarter, Miami, thanks to McGuire's touchdown and where's his 92nd extra point. He has not missed one in his career. Hurricanes have the lead. We help protect your plans and dreams. Our agents are the key. Together we make America work. We're USF and G. From the mountains edge to the ocean's edge. It's Wednesday morning in Ford County. 
Hey, Dad, is it really true that full-size Chevy pickups have more two-sided galvanized steel than Ford? That's right, son. The electrolytic deposition of zinc on steel protects it from chemical oxidation. But, I mean, if it helps stop rust, how come a big company like Ford doesn't use as much as Chevy? I don't know, son. I just don't know. Rust protection. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Top PGA and senior tool winners from 1989 teed up in the first event of the new year, the Money Tournament of Champions, Sunday on ABC Sports. Miami on top, seven to nothing, again to set the situation. If Colorado defeats Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl, no question, and there's no score there in the second quarter, Colorado would be number one, but if Notre Dame wins, well, you've got the Irish, you've got Miami here, and no question that the uh, Hurricanes are keeping one eye on their home stadium, the Orange Bowl tonight. Michigan, of course, will be eliminated from consideration because USC won the Rose Bowl 17 to 10 earlier. And if Alabama were to win this game tonight, they've got a legitimate plan. Huerta. Sends it down to the five-yard line. This is Gene Jill. Bringing it back out to the 25. Alabama setting up shop there. And we can tell you that on Saturday, January the 13th, two great ABC Sports traditions make their season premieres. You will see the AC Delco Classic, another year of the Pro Bowlers Tour beginning the 13th of January. That's a week from Saturday. And then Wide World of Sports begins its 30th year. The Harlem Globetrotters will go to the U.S. Virgin Islands, lending emotional support to an area ravaged by Hurricane Hugo last September. And that's the 13th of January for bowling in the wide world on ABC. From the 25-yard line, Hollingsworth going over the middle wide open is Kevin Turner, and he picks up a first down as he gets it out to the 36-yard line. We mentioned they like to go to Turner, their second leading receiver this season. He caught the 48 during the regular campaign. Talked about Miami's defense. There it is graphically, nine points a game. Only 216 yards a game against them. Rushing defense, 69 yards per game. Less than two yards per attempt. From the 36-yard line, they set up the screen. Here's Turner with some blocking. And Turner fighting his way out to the 48-yard line. And another Crimson Tide first down. Beautifully set up that screen. Had two men out in front of Turner. Got a couple of blocks and gets the first down. Well, I think it's exactly the type of offensive game plan Alabama has to stay with. They're going to throw the ball. They've already declared themselves, but throw it short. Make it a controlled type of passing attack. Be willing to pick it up at six and seven and eight and ten yards at a time. From the 48-yard line. Keep it on the ground, the inside handoff, but it's Martin Houston really going nowhere. Tripped up in the backfield. And uh, Greg Mark, number 94, in on the play. Mark with 15 and a half sacks and an AP first team All-America selection this year. Interesting where he might go professionally. He only goes about 240 pounds and 6'4. Whether or not he'd be big enough for a defensive end, whether or not he could be become a linebacker, of course that is open to speculation, but he is a good one. After this play, I'll touch on something with Mark. Second down and nine. And a little screen. Initially avoiding the first man was Kevin Turner, and then he turns uh, what would have been no gain or a loss into a minimal one after the 49-yard line. And it's Mark coming in and making that play from behind. And, and Frank, you brought up a good point about where would he play. You know, a role like Kevin Green fills with the Rams is something that comes immediately to mind with Greg Mark. He might not have the skills it takes to play a stand-up linebacker the whole time. He might not be big enough for that down defensive end, but he'd be perfect in that designated pass rusher type role, which is what he did right there. He has the quickness. He has the speed. We just witnessed it. Third down and nine. Hollingsworth throwing, and it's juggled and then caught. So Rand Stacy taking it to the 46. He comes up about four yards short, however, of the first down, and Alabama forced the kick. Mark and Maryland converge on the tackle. 240 to go in the opening period. Boy, great series for Greg Mark, huh? Mm -hmm. Three consecutive plays, and Bill Curry, the, the old offensive lineman, 
as a conversation with his left tackle Vince Strickland. Bill Curry, one of the great gentlemen in any professional or amateur sport. Fabulous guy. Agreed. Bill Smith sends it down to the six-yard line and paying the price is Pee Wee Smith. Well, anytime you're going to try to run one back from inside the 10, you run the risk of paying that sort of price, and Antonio London is there to bury him. That's London. But he's only on special teams, and he timed this out beautifully. And Miami will begin deep in their own territory. He pushed them all the way back to the two, but uh, his forward progress, they say, was right there at about the six-yard line, and so that's where they take over. And this is McGuire turning the corner and run out of bounds out at the 11-yard line, and you saw number five, Ephraim Thomas, who was shaken up earlier. He's back in the game and immediately makes his presence felt. And that's really a play, really, that, that McGuire shouldn't have gotten to the outside on. It, it's really a statement as to what kind of team speed Miami has. Spencer Hammond really has the angle on him, has the outside contained, and yet still, McGuire is able to turn the corner and pick up some positive yardage. Tremendous team speed on this Hurricane squad. Second and five from the 11. Miami on top, 7 nothing. 2.05 to play in the first quarter. And the pass intended for Carroll is too high. Charles Gardner with the coverage. It'll be third and five for the Hurricanes. Got a key here on McCann. McCann put down into a down stance. Just strictly a pass rusher. He collapses the left side of the Hurricane offensive line and puts the hit on Erickson. This guy is a name that you just might as well write down and get used to. He'll make a decision after the game whether or not to come back next year or go pro, but he's going to be around a long time. Third down and five. Pressure on Erickson, and he's forced to throw it away. And there's the series that Alabama needed from their defensive team. Smith makes a mistake fielding the ball inside his 10. They get great pass, uh, punt coverage, rather, and now their defense forces three downs and out. Not the great names on such as the Miami defense, but they get the job done here. Here comes the pressure. McCants was there. Steve Webb was there, and Erickson had to unload it. Tim Kalau to kick, and he'll accept this snap in the end zone. Gene Jelks to run it back. It's a wobbly line drive. Jelks at the 45 of Miami. And run out of bounds at the 37. So Alabama takes over in Miami territory. Still trying to get the crowd roused. That's easy to do here because you've got about 60,000 rooting for the Crimson Tide and 12 to 15,000 for the Hurricanes. They did come in here a decided underdog, and I don't think they like that. They're, they don't have the great names as we have come to know on this University of Miami team, particularly over the years. I mean, they have the heritage of the great names, the number one draft picks out of Miami. But Alabama, smaller, quicker perhaps. But certainly, they have a much more variety to their offense. Now they have a great opportunity to put it on the scoreboard. They're feisty. I think it would be a pretty good way to characterize them. A scrap all the way. From the 37-yard line, Hollingsworth throwing, and the catch is made by Craig Sanderson. And he is immediately forced out of bounds with the 26 by Kenny Berry. Hollingsworth. Al mentioned earlier, didn't even start until the third game of the season, a baseball player a year ago. And here he zips it in, gets the completion to Sanderson. But he's kind of scary to look at him. Hollingsworth, 6'4", about 180 pounds, and looks like you might be able to break him in half, but he's just hard to get to. At the 26-yard line. This is Saran Stacy. He's got some room. And Stacy takes it down to the 17, where Charles Farr makes the tackle. Alabama keep, keeps coming back with the same play out of the shotgun. Miami probably thinking pass. They go into a pass rush, and it's 
an underneath handoff, but it basically is a draw play. Well, I think so far it's a beautifully executed game plan by Alabama. Now, that's a lot to say for a team that doesn't have any points on the board yet, but Homer Smith, their offensive coordinator, has put together, I think, a very effective way to attack the Miami defense. Second down and one from the 17-yard line, and Hollingsworth on second and one under pressure. And has it knocked down and nearly picked off by Russell Maryland, number 67. Part of that tough foursome. There he is, Maryland, with uh, Pegues and Cortez Kennedy, and we already talked about Greg Mark. They are the best front four in college football. You will not find a group, and that's just a good timing by Maryland. Seeing that he's not going to get close enough for a sack, get up in the air and try and bat it away. Third and one from the 17-yard line. And up the first down is Derek Owens Lassick. His first carry, he gets pushed back. Crowd wants a flag. But they don't get it. Forward progress, that's Owens Lassick the first down. And Alabama keeping the drive alive inside the 15. Super effort on the part of Derrick Owens Classic. He does lack all three of the names. Over the top and close to a face mask call, but picking up the first down, Alabama. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. 40 seconds to play, first quarter. 7-0 Miami. Look out. Hollingsworth <laughs> throwing. Stacey makes the catch and nearly broken. But Maurice Cross was able to drag him down and save the touchdown. Boy, and Cortez Kennedy was right in Hollingsworth's face. I mean, he didn't even get touched at the line of scrimmage. Kennedy with tremendous penetration, forcing a quick throw. And Hollingsworth is, I mean, how do you describe this guy? Take a look at it from behind. Look how quickly Kennedy is in there. Hollingsworth has to throw off his back heel, has to throw off balance, and yet he still gets the completion to Stacy. An incredible kid. Second down and three, and before they snap it, time has expired. So the first quarter is over. At the end of one quarter of play, Miami is leading, but Alabama is driving. And we come back to start the second quarter at the Sugar Bowl after this message and a word from our ABC station. When Kathy started rehearsing, she went through a lot of changes. She changed her moves, her look, her timings. But in 34 days, she never had to change the batteries in her cassette player. You can depend on me. Now Kodak batteries have been improved, so you can depend on us to last longer. And here's the best thing to happen to your camera since Kodak film. Kodak Photolife batteries. It's a quiet afternoon in Ford County. Was he shopping? Yep, just had a fistful of coupons. Says he's going to get five bucks back. That's nothing, Gab. The road is getting hundreds back. On grocery? Oh, nope, on a new Chevy truck. But with cash back incentives, the benefits of purchasing now grow exponentially over the term of the contract. Cash back. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. Y'all heard of Lubbock, Texas? Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Here, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. The USF&G Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Today's Chevrolet, 
who invite you to see why nobody's winning, like the heartbeat of America. Back at the USF and G Sugar Bowl. Now Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Seven nothing Miami as we start in the second quarter, but it's second down and three. Alabama at the seven yard line. And here comes the Miami Blitz. And Hollingsworth on a timing pattern throws, but incomplete intended for Sanderson. Kenny Berry was back there covering with him. And there's a situation where if Kenny Berry looks back to the quarterback rather than just playing the receiver all the way he has a relatively easy interception i don't think that kenny barry had any idea this ball was even in route he turns around he's got it yep if he turns around a little bit before he does he's got an easy interception oh. that should have been an alabama touchdown contact up front and a fight and a scuffle all right dan you'll be doing boxing next month <laughs> Analyze this. You want a little course. blow by blow? Sure. No. Just a little analysis now. No, that's Alex's department. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you who's in the uh, red trunks, who's in the blue trunks. <laughs> in the crimson trunks, Alabama. And this is, looks like Russell Maryland, the guy involved from the Miami defensive side. Well, I guess this is a situation where turnabout is fair play. There we have a defensive penalty against Miami, which is going to give Alabama a first down on the heels of Alabama making the mistake, which gave Miami a first down, in which they went on ahead and scored. Maryland is really just responding to his own guy coming up over the top, Shane Curry. It gives Alabama a first and goal just inside the four. And the up back goes nowhere. Martin Houston runs into the middle of the Miami defense. And again now, Miami so tough against the run. Richard Newbill is right there. It's second down and goal at the four. That's your basic number one defense of the nation against the rush. And I would presume that uh, we will see something of the unusual nature in the part of Alabama. Some type of a rollout. Something a little different because... I don't believe that Bill Curry thinks he can just ram it in there. Well, in 11 games this season, Miami gave up only four touchdowns on the ground. Second down and goal from the four. If I was Alabama, I'd be tempted to stay in the shotgun. Little fake toss, and then the pass is incomplete. The coverage was there. Kevin Turner covered by Ryan McNeil, who stayed right with him despite the uh, good play fake by Hollingsworth. Third down and goal at the four. Ryan McNeil has come on strong for Miami over that corner ever since the injury to Roland Smith. I think we'll see Alabama spread it a little bit here. Yeah, here they go to the shotgun. I would have stayed in the shotgun on first and second down. That's what's got to here. Ninth play of the drive. Third down and goal. Hollingsworth under pressure has to fire quickly. pressuring and Hollingsworth has put together a superb drive twice he gets the completion to the Miami Hurricane right in his face Philip Doyle for the point after to try to tie the game Time march down the field. When you the battle for the touchdown of the game time at seven. When you put the all-out blitz on a quarterback, you're saying to him, I don't think you can beat us. I don't think you can defeat my blitz. That's what Miami that time said to Gary Hollingsworth, and he proved that he could, and that is very, very close to being dropped in the end zone. Look at the top of your screen. There comes Richard Newbill and Hollingsworth. Falling backwards, Frank, makes a heck of a throw. Put it where it had to be put. The coverage wasn't bad by far. He goes as Charles Gardner makes the tackle. So Wesley Carroll has given Miami a first down in Crimson Tide territory. Carroll had four 100-yard games over the season. He does about a 4-4-40. Goes about 6-1. Good receiver. That ball hung up there for a long time, and Charles Gardner slow getting back from that free safety area where he has to 
throw him that entire outfield. Well, Keith McCants is also a guy assigned to run with Carroll, and that's a mismatch. Here's Alex Johnson on first down. The ball comes loose, but the play is over after a gain of a couple down to the 44. Spencer Hammond. Yeah, they're you expecting know, an awful lot of him. Oh, yeah. Well, that's one of the beautiful parts of this Erickson offense where he puts Carroll in the backfield along with three wide receivers in the game, and then he runs Carroll out of the backfield on a pass route, and what he does is he ends up either a linebacker or maybe not the fastest of defensive backs, ends up having to cover this guy, and that's a mismatch. Particularly if you can get Keith McCants out of the pass rush. Yeah, you're right. You're, 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 you're killing two birds with one stone there. Second and seven, and Carroll makes the catch again. And that's a first down as McCants is there to make the tackle, and we've got a marker down back at the, or close to the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what you talked about a moment ago, Dan. They bring Carroll, the tailback, in motion, and they hook him up with McCants. Let's take a look, if we could, at the hit on the quarterback. You can see the, the helmet by Steve Webb as he goes and tries to hit Erickson up high, and that's what draws the flag. I don't know about that one. It wasn't, it hardly was what I would call a life-threatening blow, but then again, you can certainly see from that angle the intent to strike him with the crown of his helmet was there. And, Bill Curry expressing his displeasure. Right, very, very iffy call. At the 18-yard line after the march-off, nothing doing in the middle. Alex Johnson finds no room at all. It'll be second down and 10, and McCants uh, comes back into the game. And you can see his right thigh, how heavily it's taped. He got that thigh bruise when he was hit by his own teammate, Spencer Hammond, the heel of his shoe right in the thigh. I'll tell you, Miami may, may be the university of the quarterback with Jim Kelly and Kozar and Testaverde and now Erickson, but how about linebackers with Alabama? Eric Thomas from last year, Cornelius Bennett, P.J. Jr. They've got some great ones. Second and 10 from the 18-yard line. Erickson for the end zone. Touchdown! And this drive belonging to Wesley Carroll, who catches three including this one worth six points, 18 yards from Erickson to Carroll. And recall on that last series, Carroll, who'd missed that Notre Dame game with a separated shoulder, had come out. But back he comes, and he comes back in and catches three on the drive, and Miami has the lead again. Miami biting it off in big chunks that time. Well, this time they moved Carroll out of the backfield. He's actually lined up as the inside receiver. He makes his break to the sideline, and George Teague is locked up with him one-on-one -on -one and gives away the outside and is really in no position to recover. Carlos Huerta and a problem with the snap results in a blocked kick. And so they missed the extra point and Erickson is furious. It looked like that pressure came right up the middle. That's an interesting miss as well. We mentioned before Huerta had been 92 of 92 in his career. Here's his first ever miss. It doesn't look like a great deal of penetration up front. That's a low kick. That's a low kick by Huerta. Oh, wasn't all that bad. Little bobble. There it is. The bobble. The timing is off. The Huerta hold. drills it right into the, the defender. Yeah, that's why the kick was low. You could see the nose of the ball was even tilted forward. The holder that time, Tim Kalal, and the mistake results. Miami loses a point. Every evening, we pack 700,000 passengers onto our planes. No drinks are served, no meals are prepared. Yet our customers love our service, like our UPS Next Day Air letter. Guaranteed overnight delivery to any address coast to coast. And at prices far less than other companies charge, no one seems to mind that there's no in-flight movie. Imports. There was Toyota, then Honda. But today, there's something new. Geo Storm. It's going to hit with an aggressive stance. An eager, multiport fuel-injected engine and four-wheel independent suspension. Get to know the new Geo Storm. It's rolling in now. Getting it down for 
Huerta, and then the block by Mike Ramil, number 92. Yeah, you can see the fumble of the ball, and the nose of the ball is actually tilted forward, and it's virtually impossible for a kicker to get any elevation on the ball when it's in that position. Ramil goes 6-7. Here's Gene Jelks running it back from the four and gets taken down by his neck. <laughs> Out of the 20-yard uh, line by Jesse Armstead, who uh, Dennis Erickson was telling us about yesterday. Uh, where's number one? He's a linebacker by trade, and Erickson says, uh, remember that name. Was we we can't forget the number. I mean, it's a great number for, for anybody, no, especially a linebacker. It's tough to spot. You see the halftime score there over in the Orange Bowl, Notre Dame and Colorado. Touching on Armstead for a minute, Dennis Erickson telling us he was the most highly recruited linebacker in the country last year. He chose Miami. Out of the shotgun, Saran Stacy takes it out to the 26-yard line. Now, I know you're not going to believe this, but he, Saran Stacy, is named <laughs> after Saran Wrap. We were watching him last night on a local show, and I thought he was uh, kidding around and, and trying to fool the. Uh, the guy doing the interview. So I asked him tonight. He said, nope, my mom just thought it would be unusual. It's not spelled the way Saran Wrap is spelled, though. S-A-R-A-N. So not only is it unusual, it's misspelled. But, folks, uh, it's the truth. And he laughed about it. He, yeah. Of course, what else are you going to do about it? <laughs> second, <laughs> second and three from the 26-yard line. Spend your life selling it. <laughs> it's Derek Owens Lassick to the 27-yard uh, line. We talked about the recruiting of Miami. The fact that they play basically a pro defense as well as a pro offense, that has to help them as they go around the country. So many youngsters now coming out of high school. Uh, if you're a good high school football player, you're thinking later on about playing professional football. And if you were, where are you going to go? Well, if you an opportunity, you're going to go to Miami because they play the type of offense and defense that is a stepping stone to the pro. And your most effective recruiting tool is television. And Miami gets plenty of that. Third down and two from the 27-yard line out of the shotgun. Collingsworth flipping it out to Kevin Turner, and Turner seeking that first down, but coming up about two yards short, Greg Mark, and we have him isolated, makes the tackle on the play with ten and a half minutes to go in the half. And I think there goes Mark again, showing that he has that kind of mobility to play that pass rusher, guy that can float out, cover someone if he has to. But the sideline to sideline type of player that Greg Mark is guarantees that he'll be a success in the NFL. Going to be a good one. Bill Smith is the Alabama punter. Pee Wee Smith back for Miami. And Pee Wee fumbles at the 32 yard line. Big pile up. No signal yet. Still no signal. You now there's a ref who's concerned. He gets in there. It's not often you'll see a referee get down on all fours. Alabama. And guess who's in there on the bottom of it again, as he has been all night long, Antonio London. Still getting up, he's a little groggy, but this guy has been around the ball on just about every special teams play of the evening for Alabama. Pee Wee taking it in the chest. You don't catch the ball on a punt against your chest. You lose it like that every time. You catch it out in your hands. So if you do drop it, it doesn't bounce away from you. It drops right at your feet. The official right in there like a mole burrowing into the crowd trying to find the ball. and roots it out at the 34-yard line. Collingsworth throwing over the middle to Turner to the 30-yard line. He is stopped by Bernard Clark. 9.45 to go in the first half. Bernard Clark, he of the tremendous game against Notre Dame. I guess if there's one trademark of his career, Frank, I guess it would be a lack of consistency and turning in that big game week in week out and he can have as good a game as anyone playing at the collegiate level when he is fired and ready as he was against Notre Dame second down and six he seems to really rise to the occasion does Clark uh, the tougher the opposition so in talking uh, 
getting some information from uh, the people who have uh, talk to the scouts who checked out the Miami defense. They think he'll go in about the fifth round or so. They don't know about Greg Mark. The guy they know is going to go in the first round is Cortez Kennedy. Cortez about 300 pounds at that defensive tackle spot. Well, he's built almost exactly the same as Jerome Brown, the other great Miami defensive lineman who now toils with the Eagles. And we'll be back in a moment to the Sugar Bowl. Miami holding that six-point lead. Time out, Hurricanes. It's Tuesday afternoon in Ford County. Darn the thing about life here in Ford County. You'd think with a name like Ford County, people would prefer Ford trucks. Au contraire, people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. All we said we were on the cutting edge. Isn't that the darndest thing? Could it be we're the bellwether of major societal shifts? It's mind-boggling. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. Shearson Lehman Hutton, where we stand, January 1st, 1990. We believe the return on money market funds and CDs will fall sharply by spring. We believe, therefore, it is important to move money now from these investments into investments with greater returns selected stocks and bonds. Talk with us. Shearson Lehman Hutton. Leadership by example. New Orleans. Site of the uh, Sugar Bowl. And play resumes after a Miami timeout. Alabama third and a long three from the 27-yard line with Stacey in motion and Hollingsworth to throw. And it's knocked down. Intended for battle and getting the hand in there was Ryan McNeil to bust the play up. Well, here's a reminder that Sunday on ABC Sports, our first golf telecast of 1990, featuring 1989 winners for both PGA and Seniors Tour. The Money Tournament of Champions. Curtis Strange among those scheduled to compete for Eastern to Central Pacific this Sunday. Field goal attempt of 45 yards for Philip Doyle. His career long is 53. Long enough and good. Well, that would have matched the career. He missed earlier from 51. This time from 45 and a lot to spare. Well, and you see that that makes the score now 13 to 10 in favor of Miami, and that's why Dennis Erickson was so crazed at the missed extra point. It almost negates a touchdown. Great effort up in the middle by Miami in trying to block it, but this kick had plenty on it, and the direction was perfect. But it's still a three-point ball game where it should be a four-point ball game if Miami converts their extra point. I think it works for you psychologically, and it works in fact, because you can think a lot differently when you... Only down by three. And right now you have to say that the University of Alabama coming into this game as a nine-point underdog and, you know, having to live with talk like, geez, I hope we can hang in there and I hope it's still a ball game going into the second half. They have played exceptionally well and being led by Gary Hollingsworth, their quarterback, who's making good, smart decisions at the helm. Last night they went some 50 miles away. The team and the coaching staff, nobody knew where they went. We went over to Diamond Head, Mississippi to quiet down, cool off. It's been wild in New Orleans all week long. Alan Ward to the 10. Randall Hill. A pass to 30. And finally tackled out of the 38-yard line by, guess who, number 55, Antonio London. A little bit of showboating everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Here's London has made three tackles and recovered a fumble, and let's get a word from Lynn Swan. Al, I'm with Derek Thomas, a great linebacker from Alabama, and he was talking to the Bama defensive players. Derek, what were you telling them? Well, I was telling them right now, I don't, I don't think Miami really thinks it was going to be as easy as they thought it was going to be from the beginning. So what does that mean on the football field? That means that if you come in and you think you've intimidated the team, and you get to a certain point and you see where they're not intimidated, then you start to wonder. 
You also said you talked to some of the Miami players, and what did they say to you about uh, this football team in Alabama? Well, they asked me, did, did I really think our team could really play with their team? And you know, at Alabama, we learned that you never quit. It's never over till it's over. And we go through an off-season program called the Lord Gym, and I don't think Miami's been through it, so I don't think anybody's going to quit out there today. All right, thank you very much. All right. Al? All right, thank you, Lynn. Leonard Conley uh, took it out to the 47-yard line for a gain of close to nine, making it second down and one Miami with 8.20 to play. First half, Miami leading Alabama by three. Seeking the first down but not getting it is Leonard Conley, who is pushed back. Vantrees Davis met him as he came across the line of scrimmage, senior from Phoenix City, Alabama. He's a bandit of the mic. Yeah, some very special names. Whatever it is, he makes quite a contact. He goes about 221. They use him in the pass coverage. They use him as a blitzing, stunning linebacker type. How about this linebacking core of Alabama's last year with Thomas, McCants, Davis, Hammond? I mean, that had to be the best group in the country. Third and one, and for the first time, Miami is able to convert tonight on a third down play as Stephen McGuire takes it down to the Alabama 44-yard line. And there is McCants. There's McCants, who, as we told you earlier, has uh, a good chance of being the first player taken in the draft. You know, we, we just heard from Broderick Thomas, uh, uh, who last year was the AFC, Derek Thomas, not Broderick Thomas, Derek Thomas, who was the AFC Defensive Rookie of the Year, and a guy who just really turned the defensive tide of the Kansas City Chiefs all the way around. What a tremendous player Derek Thomas is. From the 45-yard line, pressure is on, but Erickson is able to step up and then get stripped up at the 40. That's a nice tackle by Charles Gardner after Erickson improvises for about a 5-yard gain, but it would have been about a 10- to 15-yard gain were it not for that tackle. Gardner coming in on the pass rush. Bottom of your screen, nobody there, and a good move by Erickson just to avoid the sack. And Gardner with a nice tackle, diving tackle that prevents the first down on the part of Erickson. Second and six at the 40. McCants is back in. In the misdirection for Alex Johnson, who exploits it, picks up the first down and a lot more out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Lee Osmond running him out of bounds at the 17. That's the speed that Dennis Erickson was telling us about Alex Johnson. A little delay, a little counter. We've seen a lot of this, have we, Dan? <laughs> it's the same old counter gap, counter tray. The left tackle Sullivan, the left guard Chris Ball come around, and boy, that's explosive speed by Alex Johnson. Wasn't Jim Lachey, but it, it worked. It worked, and Osmond saved the touchdown. First and ten, Hurricanes at the 17. They lead by three. Quarterback draw, and it's Erickson. Not even a draw, really, a sneak. As Erickson saw the hole in the middle and just exploited it. Jelch is there to make the tackle. That's just he in the center, Bobby Garcia, saying, hey, we've got something here. Well, take a look at this this gap right here in the middle. Erickson knows that he's gone. He ran his back out of the formation. Alex Johnson took off. You see he has no backs at all, and that's just that's a, that's a pretty poor excuse of covering the middle by Alabama defensively, a major error. Second and one, and busting through the middle is Conley for a first down as he takes it to the two-yard line. First and goal. Another 5'9", 170 pounder. Leonard Conley, we watched Alex Johnson a moment ago. 5'9", 170 pounder, but they do play time. You saw that 25, the, uh, in memory of Kevin Gibbs, there it is on the back of each of the Hurricane helmets. Kevin Gibbs, a defensive back, killed in a, in a car accident in December. Taken down by the quarterback, John Mangum, a good one, who comes up to break up the play at the line of scrimmage. In the Alabama terminology, he's the hit man. Mangum is called their hit corner. He's the corner that always goes to the strong side of the formation, which more often than not will put him in a very heavy run support duty. Not a big guy, though, only 174 pounds. It's not a big Alabama secondary at all. Second and goal, and it's Johnson to the short side of the field, slipping the tackle, taking it in, getting by McCants for the touchdown. McCants missed him. So the slippery Johnson to the short side of the field as they send three receivers to the left.
left and ran it back the other way, and he runs it right by McCann's for a touchdown. And there is the matchup that the Alabama defensive coaches wanted. They had their stud man, their big guy, McCants, coming to the outside. It's one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. Watch this. And he gets the shot, but a quick move to the outside by the speedy Johnson. And McCants comes away with air. Pretty nifty move by Johnson. Carlos Huerta's extra point is good. And so the Hurricanes march down the field. And the Hurricanes, no doubt, aware that they are scoreless at the Orange Bowl in the game between Notre Dame and Colorado at the half. And they have padded their lead as Miami 20 to 10. Earlier in the year, we saw Eric Metcalf of the Browns wearing number 21 give a little bit of a move like that. The inside back to the outside. And, boy, he just leaves McCants on the ground. Five minutes and eight seconds remaining in the first half at the Sugar Bowl. Bo knows football. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows way. Bo. You don't know Diddley. In New Orleans, Al Michaels with Frank Gifford and Dan Deardorff. The USF&G Sugar Bowl with Miami on top, 2010. And Carlos Huerta to kick off. Gene Jokes and Pierre Good back to receive for Alabama. A bouncing kick fielded at the five-yard line. Pierre Good brings it back to the 20, where he is met by a quintet of Hurricanes. And Alabama will start its drive from that spot as we take a look at the numbers on the scoring drive Miami impressively moving downfield 62 yards and nine plays and Johnson taking it over slipping a tackle by McCants for the TD 20 to 10 here and in Miami at the half scoreless Notre Dame number four Colorado unbeaten and number one and everybody's talking about what's going to happen if Notre Dame wins you know, what you could have is a split national championship. People keep forgetting. You've got AP, you've got UPI, you've got the USA Today CNN poll, you've got the New York Times poll from the 20. The catch is made by Prince Wimbley, who takes it out to the 36-yard line. Speaking of polls in the New York Times poll, Miami is already number one. <laughs> they use the computer, right? There's Wimbley uh, showing that uh, the guys in the orange and white aren't the only ones who can get involved with the crowd and I think you see what Mr. Curry thinks of that well Bill Curry is saying Prince my man yep. you do that one more time and you're on the bench and Prince is saying Bill my man you, you gotta understand I'm from Miami Prince he's not, he is from uh, Miami Prince isn't saying a word uh, no. you're right. <laughs> well he's taking it anyway here's Kevin Turner to the 40 yard line for a game of four Bernard Clark makes the tackle I've had a coach have my face mask before you don't say anything Bill Curry played for Vince Lombardi and I think that's where he was conditioned. It's a team sport just because you make the reception. What about those offensive linemen that gave your quarterback time to get there? This will probably be the last time you'll see Prince Wembley do this while he's playing for Bill Curry. Well, let's put it this way. That's the same response that Wembley would have gotten from Bear Bryant. I'll guarantee you that. Curry turned the Prince into a pauper on that one. Murray Hill, who sounds like an old New York City telephone uh, prefix, takes it out to the 44-yard uh, line. Murray Hill started this season. He was their number one uh, back, and then he got hurt. He fractured five ribs against Tennessee. And that gave Saran Stacy the opportunity to play on a more full-time basis. And Hill's been hurt, but back he comes for postseason action. He is about a 4-3 speedster. They like to have him in there. He can break the big one. 
third and two, and this is Stacy trying to dive for the first down, and it's going to be close. Yeah, this, he's going to need a real good spot to get this. I don't, I don't know if he got it or not. But you know, if you're Alabama, three and a half minutes left in the first half, you're already down by ten points, playing a heavy favorite. If you've got six inches to go for the first down here up towards midfield, what do you do? All right, let's watch Saran Stacy. He dives. Where does he come down? Well, he first of all, he lands on his own player and keeps going. He doesn't actually touch the ground. His knees don't hit. Oh, uh, here we go, Bill. Tough, tough choice. Tough choice. And he's going to go for it. Yeah, I, I don't think he has much of a choice at all. Against the number one defense in the nation against the rush. Well, he's going to either go, he, he'll go for it, or he's going to line up and hope to draw them offside, one or the other. Well, you're, you're the underdog. You're already down by 10. Fourth and inches, and they sneak it for, I believe, a first down. Hollingsworth appears to have it. Boy, that was hardly what I would call an explosive quarterback sneak. You know, you follow your overachieving center, Roger Schultz. But it's effective nonetheless, even though they are going to measure. It appears as if he has it. Well, let's put it this way. When you saw that he only needed two or three inches, and when you watched the play and you saw how much forward movement that Hollingsworth had, uh, I, I can't see any way he didn't get the first down. Mm -hmm. And it is the first down. And it comes with 323 remaining in the first half. Both of these coaches extremely personable. Dennis Erickson in his first year at Miami, but Bill Curry. Again, as we take a look at it. Bernard Clark, number 57, was the linebacker that ended up making the play. From the 46-yard line, it's uh, caught by Murray Hill, and he's tackled by Clark at midfield. Takes the ball into Miami territory. On the subject of these coaches, when, when we write our uh, movie, guys, and Kenny Wolf uh, produces it, pretty good general direction, uh, there, there's the man who uh, plays the coach. Well, I, I, is that a coach's face or what? I've known I've known Bill Curry for 15 years. Uh, at one point in time, he was the president of the NFL Players Association. A nicer guy, a more quality human being, never lived. But you would not mind sending him out to meet the gunslinger. Nope. Second and five. Kevin Turner, no game. Bernard Clark and Russell Maryland push him back. Talked about his career with Lombardi. Up there in 66 and 67 and went on to be uh, all pro center with Baltimore. And we can talk about his situation in Alabama. Uh, the fact that he's not a Bama guy. Uh, Bill went to Georgia Tech. A bitter feud between Alabama and, and the followers and the, the alumni of Georgia Tech. And he had nothing to do with it. He goes back years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he won five national champions, uh, championships in Alabama. If there's a certain portion of their alumni that would ever accept it. Third down and four from the 48-yard line as Hollingsworth throws, and the catch is made, and a first down. Boy, Hurley Brown comes up and puts a major shot on Lamont Russell. I mean, that's just the way it's supposed to be, guys. Russell is a tight end, but he's not a very big tight end. He only goes about 213, and Brown hammers him, but Russell is able to hold on to the football and get the first down once again. Leading receiver for Alabama. Tied in. But he you lose a little something with the run game when you have him in there. From the 36 yard line. Hollingsworth throws and the catch is made for another first down by Prince Wembley. And we guarantee you there'll be no celebration this time. <laughs> no, let the let the 70,000 Alabama fans in the in the, the Superdome here, they'll handle that, Prince. You know, and that's what you got to like about Bill Curry. He didn't like what Wimley did, but he doesn't send him to the bench for the rest of the game. He gets him back out there and lets him play. And I, he made a great move, yeah. spinning the defensive back completely around. But there, there are some coaches where you make a mistake like that, you only get one of them. You're on the bench, and we've got an offside here on one or the other. 
Miami came across, but did someone from Alabama move? That's the question. Roger Schultz and Cortez Kennedy was the pairing. And they say it's Kennedy. I think what we're going to see is a good play by Schultz, who's going to prematurely snap the ball when he's aware that Miami's across the ball. Outside, still first down. You know, a good center will snap the ball, even if it's early, when he knows that the other team is in the neutral zone. He'll pick up an automatic five yards if he's smart. A little hard count by Hollingsworth, the quarterback, perhaps. There it is. There's that Miami. Yep, and there's, line surge. and there's the early snap. You saw no one from Alabama moving. That's, that's a five-yard play by Schultz, the center. From the eight, here's Stacy looking for room and wraps up as he reaches the seven-yard line, and Kennedy is right there at the bottom of the pile, minus his helmet. As you watch Hollingsworth, it's hard to believe that this is his first year of varsity football. And he didn't start until the third game when Jeff Dunn was injured. And I think he is, well, when you talk to Bill Curry about him, and he's just amazed at the way he has developed. Well, he said we were really hoping at the beginning of the year that he'd be able to compete for a backup role. We weren't even sure that he was going to be qualified to be our backup quarterback. Second and four, clock down to 45 seconds. Miami ahead by 10. First half. Here's uh, the fake to Stacey. Hollingsworth throws. Touchdown, Lamar Russell. You better hope that Bill didn't see that, Lamar. And this is a gritty Alabama football team, just like their coach. They answer two strong Miami touchdown drives with their own. Let's watch the leading receiver, the tight end, Lamont Russell, once again. And they use him often as a wingback, stand-up wingback, and that's exactly what he was. But Hollingsworth finding the open gap, and it was not much, fires it in there. Yep, it got right in between Clark and Farms, and a bullet by Hollingsworth in the soft part of the zone. Philip Doyle for the point after. 11 plays, 80 yards. Takes 428 for the time to go all the way down the field and draw back within three. Hollingsworth kind of scary out there, those little legs. Well, their game plan of disregarding their running game and just trying to beat Miami by throwing the football has put 17 points on the board so far by Alabama. They trail by three. tip off the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now we can just find a court by January 13th. So Alabama driving down the field and go back on that drive and think about, remember that the critical decision by Curry near midfield, fourth down, less than a yard, Sneak got it. And in they went and Russell, the tight end, makes the catch for the touchdown. It's 20 to 17, Phil Doyle to kick off. For the Crimson Tide, Hill and Johnson back to receive, and it's a bouncing kick. Johnson takes it at the 19, and not much room to roll for Alex, who is out of bounds at the 27. 35 seconds left in the first half. Derek Thomas said it well to Lynn Swan. We've got their attention, speaking for Alabama, and I think that indeed Alabama does have Miami's attention. Miami has two timeouts remaining. 35 seconds. They're at the 27-yard line.
Erickson sending everybody out into the pattern and has it picked off. Lee Osmond out of bounds at the 27-yard line. I think I saw a flag come in at the end on the sideline. And this looks like this may go against Miami as well. And Dennis Erickson can't believe it. You see the face mask against the Canes. So Miami, instead of sitting on their three-point lead and heading into the locker room at halftime, chooses to be aggressive, and it backfires. Underthrown, and the future barrister was right there, Lee Osmond. Headed for law school. That ball just flat underthrown. Poor pass by Erickson. And then Osmond looks for the sideline, tries to pick up a little bit of a picket line, and you'll see the face mask coming over the top. Well, and uh, there Darryl it is. Dawkins. Darryl Dawkins, the wide receiver. So it's a 19 now, Alabama, with all of their timeouts. 26 picks of the clock remaining. Keep in mind the misconversion. And they go away from the shotgun. They go back under center. Keep it on the ground with Stacy, And he gets wrapped up back at the 24-yard line. Cortez Kennedy leading the charge. You, you will now see the shotgun. Yeah, I don't want to play offensive coordinator here, but that is how that that Alabama has had success during the course of the evening moving the ball is from the shotgun they've gotten nowhere under center and, and, and got nowhere once again well they got they got a minus four yards is what they got so Homer Smith the offensive coordinator who's brilliant mm -hmm. no no question about it in his his game plan tonight of attacking Miami out of the shotgun you, it can't work much better than it has but why go away from it now Homer Smith, Princeton graduate in economics, master's degree in business from Stanford, and a master's in theology from Harvard. That's not bad duty. No, that's uh, I wonder where he's trying to grow. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama taking a timeout. Hollingsworth looking like he's uh, just taking a little walk in the park. I mean, this guy is uh, this guy is nonplussed about anything. Hurricanes ahead by three. At the 23 yard line, it'll be second down and 14 for the terms of time. Of course, this is where you look for your front four to make something happen. And there's a shotgun. If you're going to ask for something, I, this front four can deliver. Yep, there's the gun. Collingsworth overthrowing Marco Battle. Battle was there. It would have had to have been the perfect throw, but he was there. And he was open by about three yards. It'll be third and 14. They are well within Doyle's range right now for a field goal. It will be a 41-yard attempt as they come up empty on this play from the 24-yard line. 14 seconds remaining. And a little shovel pass to Stacy and Mark drags him down from behind. And now they can take a timeout and set up for a tying field goal attempt. Boy, it has just been a sensational first half turned in by Greg Mark. His duties that time, get upfield, make sure no one gets outside, and then collapse back to the inside if you can. And that's exactly what he does. Make sure the play to Stacy has to go to his inside and yet has the quickness and the abilities to re react back to the inside and get in and make the play. So here comes a 40-yard field goal attempt by Philip Doyle. Great mark. Visibly concerned this evening. A serious condition of his grandfather in a New Jersey hospital. Mother unable to be here. She usually travels all the games. 40-yard attempt by Doyle is no good. So Doyle, who had missed from 51 and then made a 45-yarder, this is a 40-yard attempt. Here's a guy who's missed two tonight. He's missed only three all season coming into tonight's game. He was 22 out of 25. And as with all soccer kickers, the ball has a natural hook to it. And he just did not play this out far enough to the right. It never really had a chance. As you can see, it had 
plenty of distance as it hits about 20 yards up into the net. And of course you offset that. The holder does with a little cock to the right. That was a good hole. That was just a flat miss. And now Erickson and the Hurricanes just fall on the ball and that'll close out the first half. So the interception does not prove costly. Good first half at the Sugar Bowl. Well, you know what it was, Al? It was hard hitting. There were big plays. And it was just good, hard-nosed football played by both these clubs. And Miami leaving the field ahead by three. And, of course, keeping uh, one eye on the Orange Bowl, where they are scoreless at the half there. Miami number two in the country. Alabama number seven. And we'll return to the Superdome in New Orleans for the USFG Sugar Bowl after this message and a word from our ABC station. Happy New Year to everyone, and I hope you're enjoying a great game. Some of my best memories from college were on the athletic field. And so it's a pleasure to talk about the NCAA Foundation. The NCAA works for excellence in education and is a leader in the fight against drugs. So when the NCAA asks for your help, volunteer to be what I call a point of light. Thank you, and God bless you all. So here we go as we start the second half. The Miami Hurricanes leading by three. Colorado trailing by 14 in Miami. Alabama receiving the second half kick. Pierre Goud from the five. Snakes his way out to the 14-yard line. And Alabama will take over there. And we'll take a look at the numbers through the first 30 minutes of play. And, of course, you see that it's Miami that has aided their opponents by turning the ball over a couple of times. Time of possession favors Alabama, and the yardage by 90 yards goes to Miami. But it has been Alabama that has played opportunistic football in half number one. From the 15-yard line, out of the shotgun. Collinsworth looks like he was throwing a field goal attempt. Well, it looks like it was tipped at the line. I think it might have been Greg Mark that got a hand on the ball. Imagine yep. that, Mark being around the football. He had as good a first half as a player could have, and he opens up the second half by on the very first play, not getting close to the quarterback, but timing his leap well and getting a hand on the ball. Just grazing it, but enough to cause the incompletion. Second and 10. Murray Hill and Kevin Turner. And again, it's our, uh, next to Hollingsworth. And Hollingsworth calling all the plays at the line. And this time the play is broken up. Kevin Turner could not get out of the backfield. The charge is led by Cortez Kennedy. A little different <laughs> reaction on the part of Miami's defense this time. They come with the blitz. They cover every gap. And that play that was so effective, a little draw play or a counter play, was stuffed back at the 10-yard line for a loss. Well, they didn't even block Kennedy. I mean, no one on the Alabama offensive line even touched Cortez Kennedy, a blown assignment all the way. Third and 15 from the 10-yard line. Hollingsworth steps up and then throws, but well short of the first down, Murray Hill gets tackled by Maurice Crum, and the Crimson Tide will be forced to punt. So nothing doing on the tied first possession of the second half. And Miami Smith should goes back to uh, receive this kick. He fumbled the last time. Miami should get excellent field position on this. I like his jersey, P. W. Yeah, Smith. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> I think he handles the ball a little away from his body. Oh, P. W. Bill Smith with a kick. And P. W. doesn't come close to this one. Alabama downs it at its old 47-yard line, and so there's Miami on the uh, Crimson Tide side of the field. Certainly did not handle it away from the body, did he? No. I believe as Pee Wee gets older, that he may start using the PW a little bit more. That's, I don't know that uh, how many 50-year-old guys do name Pee Wee. Pee Wee Reese? The only one I can think of. I mean, so you know 
one. That's not enough to make a good game. Pee Wee Herman. He's not 50. <laughs> From the 46. In fact, I'm not sure what he is. Erickson throws down the 24-yard line. Wesley Carroll and a flag is down. Two, in fact, in the offensive backfield. And it's holding against Miami. Oh, that'll make Gate a great effort on the part of Wesley Carroll. Outstanding catch inside the 25-yard line. Let's see what they call that again. Might have been Bobby Garcia. Holding on the offense. Still first down. New, new press. They don't tell us here in college football, do they? No, they give these guys a break. And uh, I really think it's a good rule. I don't think that you, you need to take an 18 or a 19 year old kid and, and single him out in front of the crowd in attendance or the country on a, on a nationally televised game and call his name out and say, hey, you held, you cost your team. Kind of refreshing too, not to have the replay, is it? Second 21 <laughs> and over the middle, the catch is made by Kaczynski, the tight end, Ross Kaczynski, his first catch of the night, taking it to the Alabama 47, which was the, just about the original line of scrimmage. I don't know how Dennis Erickson is handling the score from the Orange Bowl. Notre Dame with a 14 0 lead over Colorado, whether he's telling the players or not. I, I don't know how he's handling that. A great effort by Chudzinski. That ball thrown back behind him and extremely high. And, well, that's, that's an excellent body control, snaring that ball. Maybe we can get Lynn Swan to see how they're dealing with that. Second down and 11. And the pass is thrown out of bounds. Intended for Randall Hill. Hill's the guy, and we go. Remember that third and 44 <laughs> play in the uh, Notre Dame Miami game? Well, he was at the other end of it for a first down. Oh, didn't he? He really ticked that off right. 44 yards it was. He needed, and uh, he got 44 yards. You know, a couple big things on that drive. First of all, it ended up being like a 20 play touchdown drive that took off 10 minutes on the clock. But really, I think the biggest part of that drive was Bobby Garcia, the center, getting all the way back there to recover the fumble on the play before the 44-yard completion. If he doesn't cover that ball, that's an easy Notre Dame score. I like to credit those offensive linemen when they get it coming. Third and 11, two seconds on the play clock, and now Erickson's going to take a timeout. There was some definite confusion. Conley didn't know where to line up. The play clock got down to two, and uh, Miami has to burn a timeout. I think Erickson had made a change, and Conley blew the change, and Erickson got him back to where he should have been, over to a slight wing position on the left side. And by the time he got it all sorted out and handled the traffic, he knew he was going to run out of time. Talk about the polls here for a second. Clearly, uh, as everybody knows, going into tonight's action, if Colorado wins, they'd be number one, the only unbeaten team. Miami is second. Michigan's chance is gone because they lost to the Rose Bowl. And then, of course, there's Notre Dame leading Colorado right now. Florida State, despite two losses in the AP and UPI polls, Florida State, 9-2. and two. You know what the, uh, the Alabama band right now if i'm not mistaken that is the florida state chant which is a little bit of psychology going on since florida state is the only team to have defeated miami so they're they're attempting to remind the hurricanes what happened when they met the seminoles yeah and you're right that's exactly what they're doing but again i think we have to put an asterisk behind that win because of the fact that that guy craig erickson did not play Dino Toretta had to be the quarterback pressed into duty when Erickson missed three games, and you have to wonder if the results would have been the same. But, hey, guys, we saw Bobby Bowden's club here in the Sugar Bowl last year, and they are certainly one of the most talented teams in the NCAA football ranks. They were tremendous today, a huge win. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, they might be playing the best of any college football team at the moment. But, again, with the two losses, I don't think they're going to factor in. There's Dino Toretta there, number 13. Didn't do badly either when he filled in for those two and a half games. Yeah, he gets a little air time without putting on the helmet. That's not bad. Third and 11. The crowd trying to disrupt Erickson's signals. And going deep and much too deep. Intended for Lamar Thomas, and he's covered by Ephraim Thomas. And that's a touchdown if Erickson can put the right touch on the ball. And when we talked uh, to Dennis Erickson, he said, hey, that's still one of the problems. That with that knuckle it's on his throwing hand and sometimes 
the ball just gets away from him. And I think this is a good look at it right here. I think Erickson was zeroed right in on it. He had the guy he wanted, but the ball sails on it. Does it really have the spiral that he had before? We have stopped it a couple times earlier this evening, and we have witnessed what we were told by Dennis Erickson, the coach, that it does not spiral like it used to. Just doesn't have it back yet. Tim Kalau, a high floating kick, is fair caught at the 19-yard line by Gene Jolt. Boot. Alabama takes over with the 19 with 12.07 remaining in the third quarter. This is the shop of Samsat Pazar, a thriving establishment on the outskirts of Bangkok. Unlike other international executives, he has no phone system, no computer, not even a fax machine. He does, however, enjoy one modern and efficient service nearly 4 billion people in 175 countries today can take for granted. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. It's important to Infinity to build fast cars, but it's more important to build perfectly balanced cars. And this harmony of balance comes from thinking about the effective speed on such other luxury attributes as comfort and styling. Infinity cars are primarily driver's cars, and a luxury experience is one that you most enjoy while you're in the car and moving. Infinity. Top PGA and Senior Tour winners from 1989 teed up in the first event of the new year, the Money Tournament of Champions, Sunday on ABC Sports. In case you were wondering whether or not this Miami football team knows what's going on down in Miami at the Orange Bowl, they do not. Dennis Erickson told his team, I don't want you to know the score of the ball game while you're playing. The best thing we can do as a football team is to come in here, play our best ball game, and if we win it, then we can talk about being a national championship. Al? Why don't you tell him, Lynn? Yeah, write it on a piece of paper and hand it to one of them. Be a little mischievous here, Lynn. From the 20-yard line, Alabama with Hollingsworth. Throwing under pressure. And it'll be second down and 10. Craig Sanderson, the, the intended receiver. Willis Pegues was the man chasing Hollingsworth. Well, I mean, that's that Erickson's philosophy, but I wonder if he can really manifest it. I mean, you got uh, 100 guys down on the sideline, and you can't tell me that uh, there's nobody down there who doesn't know what the score is in Miami. Well, they're all might have portable radios. Well, they're also putting it up on a scoreboard <laughs> yeah. over here that's yeah, about around. 10 <laughs> feet high and about 70 <laughs> feet long. Yeah. Don't look, guys. Outside of that, no problem. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Murray Hill takes it out to the 27-yard line. It'll be third down and about two coming up. Hollingsworth continues to do great things with the little experience he's had. The blitz is on. He picks the first back up out of the backfield. The man he has to go to, he doesn't, doesn't have the time to go deep to his intended receiver. I mean, you see top professional quarterbacks doing the same type of thing. Alabama needs a first down. They need to recapture some of that intensity that they had going for them in the first half. Third and a long two from the 27. Underneath handoff. And Kevin Turner can't escape the grasp of Cortez Kennedy and Jimmy Jones. And Alabama is forced to punt again. Well, there's such a thing as a delayed handoff. Then there's a delayed handoff. And then there's that handoff. And then there's an attempt at trickery that did not work. No. I mean, to a team that has the reaction abilities, I mean, that's just too slow. I mean, that gives everyone a chance to get back in on it, and Turner really didn't have a shot at picking up the first down. Bill Smith to kick. Good old P.W. Pee Wee Smith. P.W., my man. Oh, yeah. P.W., my man's going to run it back to the 35, but not very far. And there he is again. We talked about him before. Armstead. And with 10.37 to go in the third period, Miami on top by three. When the engine revs, you can feel it in your chest. Power. The sound of it is like a drum. Yet when you're in the car, the sound is silence. 
all your feels powerful and safe. Infinity. Are you off that phone yet? In a minute! With MCI Primetime, this 25-minute call at 9 p.m. Boston to Philadelphia costs 26% less than AT&T's regular evening rate. Are you off that phone yet? In a minute! And Primetime lets you save no matter how long you talk. Are you off that... Yes, I'm off. So the choice that's right is the choice on the right, especially if you really like talking on the phone. MCI Primetime. Real savings 24 hours a day. Call now, get one month free. In the face of crime, drugs, and poverty, one family's strength and determination to rise above it. Watch Peter Jennings on ABC's World News Tonight, tomorrow. Here it's Miami leading by three in Miami. Colorado scored a touchdown but missed the conversion. And Notre Dame leads 14-6 at the end of the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Here now Miami from the 33-yard line. Conley with a huge hole. And out to the 42-yard line, a little bit short of the first half. Keith McCants comes in to make the tackle. I'm surprised Jesse Armstead didn't make the tackle. <laughs> You, or, never, you never know. Or at least Stacey Harrison. <laughs> Let's spotlight Keith McCants here. Great linebacker for Alabama, and he's just locked up. Initially, he's eyeballing Wesley Carroll as he comes out into the backfield, and, and he determines if the run comes up to fourth, makes the pass. Second and short. McGuire picks up the first down as he takes it out to the 44-yard line. We talked so much about the Miami defense all night, number one of the nation. They are not bad on offense. 454 yards per game average, 144 yards rushing the ball. Once they take control of a game, they, they do take control of it. They're strong physically, and they tend to dominate. They're a little bit of a bully type of a team. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but once they start beating up on you, they thoroughly do it. 77,452 the attendance tonight with the Superdome from the 44-yard line. Erickson incomplete. Talking to the intended receiver. Second good, down and ten. Good coverage downfield by Lee Osmond. And good pressure on the quarterback by Keith McCants. Keith McCants, who was slowed a little bit. He got a thigh bruise in the first half. You can see he's taking, he's taking that wrapping off his right thigh that he had on there. Boy, look at that burst. Look at that acceleration. I think Mr. Erickson knew that he was coming. That is a tremendous explosion by Keith McCann. If you're a quarterback, you line up behind the center and you look over and see him usually on the inside. He's enormous. 18 tackles against Auburn, as you saw. Tonight he has three tackles. Johnson stopped at just about the line of scrimmage. And it'll be third down and 10. 9.30 to play, third quarter. Offensively, not looking to be nearly as sharp as they were executing in the first half. Both defensive teams seem to still be playing with some intensity, but offensively, they're just a little something lacking. Took a wide receiver to the right. They like to go there. They did in the first half. Third and 11. The chance was on a blitz that time, and the pass is caught by Dawkins. At the 33, a first down Miami. And we talked about it in the first half. When you put those trips over to the right, you're going to get man-for-man -man coverage, and that time, they got their coverage. Dawkins working one-on-one -on, -one on Ephraim Thomas. They pick up the blitz, and single coverage. And we talked about the trips and how they're afraid of the inside guy, and that's exactly what they got that time. Forcing the man coverage, it's Dawkins working underneath, and Ephraim Thomas locked up in that man coverage. is trailing Dawkins and has to ball behind and end up making a saving tackle. That would have been a touchdown if he doesn't bring Dawkins down. That's Dawkins' first catch of the night. The play clock down to three. There was confusion that time, but Conley is able to move off the left side and inside the 25, and he's close to a first down. John Mendel makes the tackle. They got down to three seconds on the play clock because Erickson was trying to change the play, and he obviously had the right change. They pick up good yardage, but he almost had a delay of the game. Good quarterback tonight. We were going on and on about Hollingsworth, but Greg Erickson's having a good night. Well, Erickson's had a great year. I mean, uh, the Hollingsworth is kind of a story because nobody's heard of this guy. Craig Erickson is leading one of the great offensive teams in the country and has all year. Second and one, and Conley as a first down as he gets to the 18-yard line. 
with seven minutes and 56 seconds remaining. Thursday, Tom Bosley is back in an all-new Father Dowling Mysteries. He'll show you that sometimes the good guys do wear black. Tracy Nelson co-stars in the premiere of the Father Dowling Mysteries Thursday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. First and 10 from the 18-yard line. Erickson throwing it away. Everybody was covered off to the right. He had three receivers set in that direction and looked back toward Bethel, and he was covered as well on the left and throws it out of bounds, second and 10. Why don't you go to Bethel, and Spencer Hammond was all over him. Well, that's also, I think, an indication as to how well-schooled Craig Erickson is in the Miami offensive scheme. I mean, he, he had a read, he saw it was taken away, and rather than trying to improvise, trying to make something big happen in a, in a good part of the field, hey, launch it. The second down. Second and ten. Here's Conley. He takes it to the 11. What a shifty movement. Nice run. Very slick. Well, Miami, we mentioned at the top, they've won 83% of their games in the uh, decade of the 80s. And there they are against number one team. It's uh, been noted many, many times in the recent weeks. They have seven times during the 80s faced the team ranked number one and won every confrontation. Two national championships, three number two ratings, going for another one tonight. They came in number two tonight. Ken of Miami, 17 number one draft picks have come in the last seven years. It's uh, Bobby Garcia, the uh, center, and a key man in the uh, Miami attack. Well, this is an offensive line that's already been shuffled around. They lost their left guard, Rod Holder, when he was sent home for violating a, a team rule. And now Garcia comes off the field. Mike Sullivan, the left tackle, is nursing a bad leg. So this is not one of the strong suits on the Miami, on the Miami squad right now. It's this banged up offensive line. There's Garcia. He seems kind of trailing the play. And it looks like it gets rolled up on his ankle. You see him trying to grab it right there as he goes down. And, of course, Garcia was going against one of the best defensive players on that front line for Alabama, Willie Wyatt, number 98. They moved Darren Handy from guard over to center. And Erickson throws. Touchdown. The tight end, Kudzinski. Simple pattern. Play action to the left side. Chazinski is lined up on the right, and he just runs a post pattern, just runs a diagonal route right down the middle of the field. And George Teague is just a little late getting there. Carlos Huerta for the conversion. And an errant snap again. Talao gets uh, wrestled down, and so that's the second time now that... Miami has missed the conversion, and that's the same uh, response we saw from Erickson the first time. Bad snap from the uh, center, Mike Azer. Take a look at it again. You saw earlier he snapped a little low, Azer. This time it was high. Yeah, you saw Garcia go out of the game. Don't get confused and think that's why they had a bad snap. Garcia is not the snapper for field goals and extra points. Anyway, let's go back and take a look at the touchdown, though, to Rob Jodzinski. Excellent protection. He's really wide open on the play. Tig, not even the ballpark, the young freshman out of Montgomery. Good offensive team. Sometimes I dream I'm in Italy, driving this incredible sports car. And my boss is there. He says, We need a ride to the shareholders meeting. Now, here's where it gets weird. The sports car has four doors. I mean, there's no such thing as a four-door sports car. It's just a dream, right? Every evening, we pack 700,000 passengers onto our planes. Go upstairs. Go upstairs, go upstairs. No drinks are served, no meals are prepared. Yet our customers love our service. Like our UPS Next Day Air letter. 
guaranteed overnight delivery to any address coast to coast. And at prices far less than other companies charge, no one seems to mind that there's no in-flight moving. Yard line. And then he's a little slow in getting up, but uh, he arises in Hollingsworth, who took over the uh, second week of the season in the middle of the game against Kentucky. When Dunn went down, the starting quarterback, and uh, it's just been a story of season, as we refer to uh, from time to time tonight for Hollingsworth. That Alabama record for attempts completion. Passed over 2,300 yards. From the 28-yard line. And intended for Saran Stacy. Can't make the grab. You know, a real burden falls now on the Alabama offensive line. You know, we've talked all night about the talents of the front four for Miami. And now trailing 26 to 17, operating solely out of the shotgun formation. Uh, if the game is going to be won by the Crimson Tide, it's going to be won by those guys and their abilities to keep Miami away from Hollingsworth. Key drive right here. Second and ten. And Hollingsworth taken down a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle made by Maurice Crum after he picked up about three. Last few times that Miami's offensive unit has been on the field, they've been able to move the football. They move it well, and now trailing 26-17. It would behoove Alabama to start making first down. Third and seven from the 31-yard line. Hollingsworth throwing and dropped by Lamond Russell. He was there and he was open and he would have had the first down but couldn't hang on. And one for Alabama for it to kick. Well, somebody shot that ball on the way out of there, end over end almost. 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Miami on top, 26-17. Dewey Smith back at the 30. PW, I think the other one. I'm PW. PW. Bill Smith. Gets the kick away. And PW at the 38. Feels like a, a POW as he gets uh, wrapped up by four Alabama Crimson ties, including number one, Stacey Harrison, in again on the tackle. In again. Yeah. <laughs> 5.59 to go for the third. Not to be confused with Jesse Armstead. Not at all. Stacey's having a night. Jackson Lehman Hutton, where we stand January 1st, 1990. Last New Year's, we predicted a very good year for stocks. And in 1989, the stock market rose over 25%, far outperforming fixed income investments. In 1990, we believe most stocks will once again outperform fixed income investments. Talk with us. Shearson Lehman Hutton. Leadership by example. If I had a Nissan 240SX, it'd be a red coupe. Wait. A silver fastback. And I'd go for a spin up Route 7. The twisty part. Just me and Astro. No, Amy. Heck, Christy Brinkley. Wow! Yeah, me and Christy in my silver, no, red 240SX. Driving into the sunset. Hi, I'm Sweet Lou Dunbar of the Harlem Globetrotters. Happy New Year. Football is almost over. But if you want more passing, running, scoring, watch up. January 13th on ABC's Wide World of Sports. 
Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff at the Superdome in New Orleans. Alabama Crimson Tide, trailing Miami by nine. Hurricane ball from the 41st down. There's Conley. Out for a gain of about five to the 45-yard line. All right, here's tonight's quiz. What is a Pee Wee Smith's real first name? Da, 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 well, that's unfair, da, da, we know. Da, da. Demetrius. Demetrius. I like Pee Wee better, don't you? I like P.W. Pee Wee Herman's yeah. real name? Paul Rubin. How do you know that? Pee Wee Reese's real name? Harold. No, Pee Wee Randall's first name. I'm not making it up. That's his real name. Second and six. And it's a first down if they give him forward progress, and they will. Lamar Thomas making the catch, and he is into Alabama territory. This is a, a vital drive for Alabama to stop right now with Miami up by nine. Thomas has to come out as he holds his, his right arm to his body, and you don't know if that's a nerve problem or a shoulder or what. Looks like they're looking at his, at his elbow. First down, Hurricanes at the 49. Oh, yeah, and that's, this will be against the Canes. Left side of their offensive line jumps up and out of their stance. Meanwhile, you can see Garcia is back in the game, the center. He was shaken up. Dead ball, ball start on the part of the offense. Still first down. You have Erickson still in the middle of all of his audibles. Look at him still barking to both sides. Watch the left side of the line. I think it's Leon Searcy, the left tackle, comes up out of there in a hurry, and Handy, the guard, does as well. Erickson is still trying to change the play. Oh, that's that's the problem with the crowd noise here. It's definitely working against Miami. First and 15. Here's Conley again, accelerating. Fumble. And it's still loose, and Alabama has it. Well, they needed that. Gardner covering for Alabama. Charles Gardner. Well, the old counter play, and this time Conley outruns his blockers and takes a violent shot on the sidelines and coughs it up. You have to admire the toughness of the young man. You wonder about the advisability. Now, instead of taking it out of bounds there, steps right back into a... That's Osmond with that hit. ...by that... Linebacker, halfback type, they call him uh, Bandit or something like that, but he really Rover. put a, Rover, <laughs> he really put a pop on him. First down, Crimson Tide from the 37. Now, Alabama's been able to do nothing offensively in the second half. And here is Stacy taking it out to the 41-yard line. Saran Stacy picking up about four with 4.30 to play in the third quarter. And, and would you guys agree with me that as we've watched this third quarter unfold, if, if Alabama doesn't do something with this turnover on this drive, they're in real trouble. Yeah, you know, Bill Curry knows that too, Dan. He's played in a lot of games. The emotion, the feel, the, the momentum begins to swing, and he knows that. He knows he needs a big drive right here. Second and six to the 41-yard line. Turner. Nope. I would not run the ball from the conventional offensive formation again for the balance of the evening if I am Bill Curry and, and the Crimson Tide. I mean, here they are in a conventional two-back set trying to run the ball against Miami. They are just not going to do it. They're averaging less than two yards a carry tonight. We had a graphic up a while ago that showed you a yard and a half, I believe. Yeah, 1.6 yards uh, per attempt. Uh, they're just not going to do it. Now I think wisely they're back in the shotgun. Third down, six from the 41. There's a flag. Miami flag. jumps. And it's tipped, and it's picked off. But again, Miami had jumped. This is Kenny Berry on a play that uh, will be called back. Hollingsworth had the free play, went ahead and tried to squeeze one in. Shane Curry was the man who jumped. That's assuming Hollingsworth probably would not have thrown that ball. He knew he'd, he could see this. He knew that he had the free play. Top of your screen, there is the quick movement. And now Hollingsworth knows he has an opportunity to unload the football. This ball was deflected and picked off. Kenny Berry 
bringing it back, but the offsides will negate that. It still does not give them enough for a first down. It is third and one from the 46-yard line. And somehow finding room and slipping through is Derek Owens Lassick, who takes it out to the 49-yard line and gives Alabama a first down. Boy, you talk about a guy who didn't have a whole lot of help. I mean, that is nothing more than, than, than Owens Lassick picking that up strictly by being a little bit a little bit crafty and finding a little nook and finding a little room and getting in there. His lead, box, his lead blocker took one hole. He had to take another, and he did it all by himself. Up they come with the gun from the 49-yard line, first and 10. Hollingsworth going deep and too deep, and it's picked off at the 15-yard line by Charles Farr. Oh, that was a bad pass. Probably the first major bad thing that Gary Hollingsworth has done all night. Hung that one up for grabs. No chance to get the completion. If he's going to put it down there, should have thrown it out of range of any Miami defender. Just, just a bad pass. They'll turn it over. But actually, if you have to turn it over, that's the way to do it. I mean, clear down at the 11-yard line. Yeah, but don't do it on first down. No. That's Prince Wembley, the intended receiver. And what he does here, though, even though it's overthrown, he makes a tackle that saves Alabama a whole lot of yardage. In essence, a decent punt. Really? Anything down inside the 15-yard line, that's down at the 11. And on first down, Conley is short of the 15-yard line. Thomas Rayham making the tackle. Two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Now here's where three downs and a punt is really critical for Alabama. Again, though, all the pressure in this game from the very beginning has been applied by Miami. You always get the impression that Alabama is, is playing a whale of a game just to stay this close. Second and eight. McGuire to the 15. It'll be third down and seven. At uh, the Orange Bowl, Notre Dame still in Colorado. Colorado missing a conversion. 14 to six is the score. Buffalo's hanging in there. Again, clearly, uh, Colorado would be number one if they win that game, but if they don't, well, it's, uh, it's up in the air, and not only is it up in the air, you could have uh, different results in different polls. Third down and seven from the 15-yard line. Erickson throws, and that's a key first down caught by Randall Hill on a third and seven play out to the 23-yard line. And Dan had just stressed the importance of, of Alabama holding them and forcing them to kick. And uh, on a key third and seven, Randall Hill makes the reception. He uses that great speed. It looks like he's going to go on a fly pattern, and you have to respect that, the defensive back. And he just stopped after he picked up the first down yardage, and Erickson fired it in. From the 24-yard line, there's McGuire. Somehow finding room down the sideline he goes. Really get the impression about now that the Alabama defense looks like some of the aggressive play that they were exhibiting in the first half, the, the, the slicing, the knifing upfield. Now they're giving a little bit more. They're not getting off the blocks quite as quickly, and the hitting doesn't seem to be quite as hard. It's, a, it's almost like the, the physical prowess of Miami is starting, is starting to take its toll. Dan, you saw it right there. McGuire with the size and strength hitting the sack and just bowling ahead. More than double in favor of Miami. Total yardage. Second and one. Wire appears to have gotten that one as he takes it out to the 35 yard line with 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You know, the funny thing about Miami, if indeed they do win the national championship, not only would it be their third of the decade, but uh, Howard Schnellenberger would have won one, Jimmy Johnson, and Dennis Erickson. I guess that makes a statement as to what type of program is in existence. And of course, if you're Dennis Erickson, where you come from the Palooza up at Washington State, but look at the players you inherit. I mean, what a dream come true. 35-yard line, first down. Craig Erickson, no relation to his coach. Even though he still loves him as much as his son, I'm sure. Randall Hill makes the catch, and there's a little scuffle that breaks out. Yeah, Mangum is uh, getting in there. I don't know what uh, his problem was as far as 
Randall Hill is concerned. Hill had a, really not much of a position to defend himself. Hill with all the speed we talked up a moment ago. He's 4-3, and Mangum, that's a, just a good tackle. He respected the deep possibility. Well, he's Mangum down. came back up, and they're going to mark it off. Well, Hill went ahead and inserted his foot in, in not the most convenient of places on Mangum, and that's, that, that's the problem Mangum was having. Watch John Mangum and Randall Hill exchange body parts. Let's take a look at that non-convenient locale as we get set to return to the Sugar Bowl after this message and a Ooh. word from our ABC station. Hey, it's a tough game. That's me, Tommy Lacerda, before I lost 30 pounds in three months with the Ultra Slim Fast plan. Now, that was last June, and the big news is I haven't gained an ounce back. The plan is easy. I had a delicious shake for breakfast, one for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. I feel great, and I'm never going to look like this again. Hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. He's a priest with a new kind of collar. I'm sort of an armchair detective. She's a sister of mercy. Actually, I'm with a much tougher unit than the police department. The God Squad's back in all new Father Dowling Mysteries, Thursday. You said you were here. You'll be you coming? Yeah. Ah, the ladies are going to be crushed. You know I wish I could be there. Miles away, so much to say. Your mama said hi. Michigan Bell, long distance. No. Isn't it worth the call? You may not be too worried about what you wear to work. Excuse me, what do you want? But you can bet your customers are. Very nice. Call Sintas. Hi. May I help you? We're helping successful businesses look the part. If your business only has a few seconds... I'm here to fix your refrigerator. Uh -uh. ...to make a good first impression. Oh, I like it. Call Sintas. We'll help your business Come make a in. first impression that will last a lifetime. The Wolverines lose, but Bo's a winner. The Rose Bowl story after the Sugar Bowl. Fourth quarter begins at the Superdome in New Orleans. Miami has the football at its own 38-yard line, second and seven. And Miami leads 26 to 17. Hurricane second ranked. Alabama seventh. And on second and seven, Conley takes it out to the 41-yard line. It'll be third and about four coming up. Let's take a look at the numbers through 45 minutes of play. And the longer this game goes on, needless to say, the more lopsided the numbers become in favor of the Miami Hurricanes. More than a 2-1 to one advantage in total yards. And that is even with two more turnovers than the Crimson Tide. Crowd exhorting the Alabama defense on third down and four, and Erickson throws, and it's Hill again. And Hill has a first down and a lot more. Escaping tackles down the sideline. He goes, picking up blocks. And Hill takes it all the way down to the 11-yard line. Loses the football, but they're going to whistle it dead. And the officials right there. No hesitation at all in ruling it down. We talked about Randall Hill's speed of 4-3. And Hill is slow getting up, but he really turned it on down the sideline. Remember one time before, Miami lost the ball, and the officials ruled that he was down, even though that our replay showed that it was a fumble. How about this time? Let's, let's take a close look at this one. Randall Hill. 
It looked like that ball was on its way out before his knee touched the ground. It was very close. Let's look at it again from a different angle. Watch the ball. There comes the big right hand. Oh, and that's a fumble all the way, and the crowd Ooh, just heard yeah. it. Sure. And the crowd saw it right along with you. That was McCants, and that was a pro move. How many times have we watched the linebackers in professional football do that, particularly Lawrence Taylor, who I think I won't credit him with inventing it, but, I mean, we've seen him do it many times over. There it is again, and that's the second time tonight that a hurricane fumble was actually ruled as being down so that's twice Alabama tonight has been victimized by the officials call this is McCants running down a 4-3 yep. sprinter and then giving you a move that I know would have a lot of professional scouts as grueling he's a huge man but he's gazelle quick and he proved it on that play 13 yard line first and 10 Conley and he's wrapped up as John Mangum comes up to make the tackle for negative yardage. Conley out, and McGuire comes in as the sole running back in this set, 13-35 to play. Second and 12 at the 15. Trips left. And McGuire takes it to the 11-yard line. Sullins makes the tackle. Notre Dame has scored again, and the Fighting Irish lead Colorado 21-6. to six With uh, a minute and a half, Kenny? A minute and a half remaining in the game. And Miami's argument is going to be quite simple. If we both end up the season with only one loss, I beat you, and I beat you pretty bad. And that means I'm number one, and it's difficult to argue with. Third and nine. And it's caught for a touchdown. Randy Bethel. The man Dennis Erickson said is the best athlete I've ever had at the tight end position. Missed three games this season with a broken fibula, but has come back strong in good hands. But I'll tell you, Craig Erickson did everything but catch that for him. Put it right on his fingers. So many weapons on this Miami team. They're like an octopus. You cut off one of the arms, two of the arms, they still come at you from a lot of different directions. A multi-talented offensive team. You saw Erickson look left. And when Bethel broke to the outside, he was right there with it. Huerta for the extra point. And so that was a drive. Alabama had to stop, and they couldn't. Miami converting two key third down passes in both instances to Hill, then the touchdown pass to Bethel, and the Hurricanes have a commanding 16-point advantage. And they are laying claim to number one, convincingly. But what does Lou Holtz have to say about that? Not all rebates are equal. Dodge introduces the guaranteed rebate. Now you get $1,000 to $2,000 on Dodge's Best. 1990 Dodge Caravan, Daytona, Dodge Dakota, and most Ram Tough pickups. If the rebate goes up during this model year, we'll pay you the difference. The guaranteed rebate from Dodge. No other car company has ever done that. Offer ends soon. Individuals performing together. Listening, arranging, building. At Northwest, our performance is helping you do business. Getting you wherever you need to go on time. Creating new ways to make things work for you. Because our job is helping you do yours. The Miami Hurricanes on top 33 to 17 in the Lynn Swan reporting before that uh, Coach Erickson was trying to keep it from the Hurricanes as to what was taking place at the Orange Bowl. I guarantee you they know what's happening in Miami right now. They lead by 16 here. Notre Dame leads Colorado by 15 at the Orange Bowl as Alabama runs it back. Jelk takes it out to the 22-yard line. Past four years. Take a look at that. 
Miami in 86, 11 and 1. They wound up second in 87, a national title last year. Second, and then Jimmy Johnson goes to Dallas. Erickson comes in, and here they are tonight. 10 and 1 coming in, going on 11 and 1. And second to a number one team that's uh, down right now with a minute and a half to play in Miami. And this is no university with 50 with 50,000 students. They have something like 8,200 undergrads, a, a relatively small school. Alabama from the 22-yard line. Here's Hollingsworth, and he gets taken down by Cortez Kennedy, and they can smell it right now. You know, it's worth pointing out, Dan, too, when you take a look at the, the Hurricanes. This was a, uh, a program very much in shambles and in disarray in the 70s. They, they won only 38% of their games. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, Florida State and Florida re out recruiting them to the extent that Miami, uh, at one point, there was even some talk about disbanding the football program. A lot of credit has to go to Howard Schnellenberger and a Jim Kelly. Second and 13. He really was a forerunner of a long selection of great quarterbacks under Schnellenberger. And I'll tell you who else, uh, Sam Jankovich, their, their athletic director. He's the guy that, that really came in here and spearheaded a lot of the things that, that happened uh, to the University of Miami, making the decisions who to hire. One of them, of course, Dennis Erickson, and he goes all the way back to their Montana days, Billings, Montana where Jankovic was the high school coach there at one time. And that is now a final. Notre Dame has beaten Colorado. Colorado finishing the, the season with one loss. Notre Dame with one loss. And, and there is one headache yep. being delivered. Marco Battle, and he knew he was in a battle with Ryan McNeil. But Battle gets up and runs right back off the field. Tough, tough people playing this game here tonight. So it looks like if this game holds true to form that Everybody who's going to lay claim to number one is going to have one but loss, and you can see their they reaction. They don't know, Dan. <laughs> you can see their reaction. They saw the final on our graphic up on the screen here, and they know that the part they couldn't do was done for them by Notre Dame. Bill Smith kicking, and our man Pee Wee's going to call for a fair catch at the 33-yard line. And we're going to... Uh, show you the way they reacted when they saw that score, and there it was when it first came up. Well, they're still reacting on the sidelines. This is the replay of when that came up on the scoreboard here. It's the team that November the 25th defeated Notre Dame 27-10 convincingly. There might be some argument, but not on the part of anyone who's associated with Miami who's going to be number one. of its unique point design, the Black & Decker Bullet Drill Bit drills holes up to four times faster than an ordinary drill bit. Nothing's faster than a bullet drill bit. Coming from Paramount, take a car, a tank, Hang on, Dad! or even a plane. Nice landing. Thanks. But get to your video store and order today. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Come on, Dad. Miami Hurricanes on top, 33 to 17. Craig Erickson and the Hurricanes thinking about a national championship right now because Colorado has been defeated. Erickson goes back to pass. And with nobody open, uh, takes it back to the line of scrimmage, which is the 33, second and 10. And uh, here's Lynn Swan. Well, Al, I'm standing here in the stands. The scoreboard flash that the Notre Dame game is a final, that Notre Dame has won. That's why the Hurricane Band is playing. This small section of people, all fans from Miami, relishing what they think is going to be a national championship victory for their team. And by the way, all the players have been looking up at the scoreboard. They do know that the game is over. Notre Dame has won. Colorado's defeated. They're looking for number one. I'm not going to disagree. Well, as we said, it would be their third national championship of the decade. 
as uh, Alex Johnson takes it out to the 39-yard line. Dennis Erickson. Not that it really matters, Alan, Dan, but who's going to be number two? You're doesn't right. seem to count much. You're right, Frank. <laughs> no thoughts, huh? <laughs> Not that it matters very much. <laughs> we'll be a little noted or long remembered. This game isn't that much of a blowout that we're going to discuss that. Well, wait a minute. That's the left tackle that moved like that. Third down and five as Johnson gets hit by Mangum up at the 40-yard line. And uh, Miami will be forced to kick. And Mangum pays the price here with 9.09 to play. And that Johnson was happy they changed that play. We've got an injured hurricane down on the field. Right at the 40-yard line. Can't see who that is. I believe that's Mike Sullivan, the uh, tackle. He came into the night limping and not even knowing whether he was going to play. And he has gone the entire game up to this point with a badly sprained ankle that he re-injured during the workout this past week here in New Orleans. He had, well, quite frankly, troubled Frank. I watched <laughs> Sullivan down on the field before the game trying to work with the Miami trainers who are now escorting him off the field. And I'm standing there with Alan. I turned to Alan and said, hey, I don't see any way this guy's going to be able to play. I asked him, and he said he's going to try the first series. But I, looking at him, attempting to work out and loosen up, I didn't see how this guy was going to be able to do it. A gritty performance tonight by Mike Sullivan. Good run blocker. Might be a pretty good throw. Big, 276 pounds, 6 foot 4. He comes hobbling off, and Tim Talau for his first kick of the second half. Gene Schultz back to receive for Alabama at the 20-yard line. Yeah. Schultz at the 16, and nothing but a white shirt and a flag. They get a face mask here. Jesse Armstead made the tackle. He's everywhere tonight. Yep. Playing both sides of the ball, it seems. Oh, this is going to go against Alabama. Is it a fake fair catch? Did he signal the fair catch? If he signals the fair catch and then attempts to run with the ball, that, that's, that's a no-no. Oh, you're right. There it is. On the part of the fair catcher, he started to run with the ball. It's the way of the game. It'll be first and 15. Wasn't a very good signal. I think he thought maybe he'd get away with it. Well, you're really supposed to get your hand up above yeah. your shoulder, but there's no question. I mean, that's a good call. Jelks was uh, signaling the fair catch. Uh, he was going to get the defense a little bit off guard, and then I don't know what he was thinking about when he took off with it. I mean, why signal a fair catch and start to run with the ball and get nailed by about four guys? <laughs> A little self-destructive. Hollingsworth from the shotgun. Deep drop. Set up the screen. Kevin Turner has some blocking. And gets it out to the 20-yard line. It will be second and seven. And we talked about the great linebacking coming from Alabama over the years, Cornelius Bennett, CJ Jr., Eric Thomas. How about the great linemen that have come from Miami over recent years? Talk about their quarterbacks, but Jerome Brown, Dan mentioned earlier was Philadelphia. Jim Burt, out the 49ers, Bill Hawkins, Dan Stubbs. You want to be noticed? You want to play in a pro set defensively and offensively? Miami's not a bad place to be. Second and seven. That's Owen Vlasic. This Miami recruiting message was brought to you by Frank Kemper. <laughs> well, Miami's going to have a... Feeling very smug about what happened today. Well, you're going to get the Rose Bowl. Season. You're going to get some season tickets out of this, Frank. I what? think it's really helped him recruit. I don't think there's any question about it. There'll be more competition, though, in the recruitment area for Miami because of what happened yesterday with Steve Spurrier accepting the job at Florida. At Florida. Well, he came right out and stated, we want to get Miami back on the schedule, and, and he's coming home. Third down, a long two from the 25. This is Owens Lastic, and he fights out to the 28-yard line and has a first down. With 7.22 remaining in the game. 
Last time these two teams met, it was 1979. Ironically, Alabama was on its way to a national championship, and Miami was just beginning to put its program back in place. They met a touch to lose, and Alabama won it by a score of 30 to nothing. Ten years later, the two teams are meeting again, uh, perhaps on the verge of a Miami national championship. From the 28-yard line, Owen Vlasic, out past the 30, steps out of bounds at the 33. Well, who's going to be number one? That's uh, that's the question. Uh, seemingly, it will be Miami. It would be shocking if it wasn't, but... Uh, We've we're been gonna, shocked we're before. Gonna, we're going to conduct a poll here. Uh, Roger Swibel will uh, be joining you from our studio in New York shortly, and uh, we'll have a little phone in vote, we understand. Putting uh, the machinery in place for that as we speak. Second down and five from the 33-yard line. Saran Stacy. Out to the 34, and there's a marker down. Might get a few Notre Dame alumni involved in that, wouldn't you think? Dan Zylan right now, he's still voting for Michigan. You know, I was just thinking about that. Uh, daydreaming here for a second. I, uh, I applaud Had Southern Michigan Cal. Today? I, I, no, I, no, not really. I mean, I, even if Michigan would have won today, I, I, I don't know how anyone could have seen this Miami squad play during the course of this season and, and what they did to Notre Dame and now how they're handling Alabama. I don't know how you can say they're not the number one team in the country. Base pass on part of the defense, first down. I don't care if Michigan would have beaten Southern Cal by three touchdowns today. Uh, Miami is the best team in the country. I, I don't think that... Uh, I know that Notre Dame people won't like to hear that, but the fact of the matter is they played and, and Miami won handle. Well, Lou, Lou, there's a, a look at the face mask. Lou Holtz's argument is, hey, wait a second. Look at our schedule against Miami. Look at what we, what we did over the course of the season. But how can you... Uh, I understand first tie, It's the first tiebreaker. I can understand. <laughs> You're right. It's head the first tiebreaker. Right. From the 38-yard line, Colin Gurth. And it's Battle who makes the catch, and he's out of bounds at the 47, and that's the first down. Let's take a look at Miami's year here. And there are a couple teams on their schedule to jump out at you that maybe weren't worthy opponents. Well, there it is early on. They kill Wisconsin and uh, California, beat Missouri handily, went by six against Michigan State. Then that one loss, and remember, Craig Erickson was hurt. Victories over East Carolina, San Diego State. So they have detractors say, hey, look, look at those softies. Well, San Jose stayed on there as well. And we're not demeaning their programs, but they're not the type of team that Notre Dame was playing. Yeah, that you'd think a top, a consistent top 10 team would play during the course of the season. And then the Hurricanes will, uh, they, they know what the argument is against them, but they point out, they say, hey, wait a second, guys. Uh, we beat Notre Dame, beat Pittsburgh, beat Michigan State. They all went to bowls. And on their way to beating Alabama. You guys some to gather up some thoughts i want to talk about bill curry in a second here and what his future might be second down and 16 underneath handoff and martin houston is wrapped up at the 50 yard line i mean by any stretch of the imagination this has been a successful season for the university of alabama and for bill curry their head coach and yet there is no doubt that there is still lingering resentment towards Bill and the fact that he's a Georgia Tech guy and not an Alabama man. Mm -hmm. and, and I really wonder, I really wonder what his long-term future is uh, in Tuscaloosa. Well, he was quite candid. He says it's affected his family, the reaction to, to what has gone on. Third down and 12. And Hollingsworth Look over here. has his pass dropped by Saran Stacy. He's saying uh, that Bear Bryant is no longer there, but the ghost of a Bear Bryant remains there, and we talked to Bill about it, and uh, he, of course, was very candid in what he said, but did not elaborate on what his plans were, but I mentioned it was sort of like the Vince Lombardi syndrome, isn't it? And I don't, want to, make, I don't want to make more out of it than, than, than what it appeared to be when he told us these things. I mean, he wasn't saying, hey, I'm unhappy at Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, he's very proud of what he's accomplished at Alabama. And uh, so, I mean, don't get the impression that he said, hey, I can't wait to get out of here. That's not the case mm -hmm. at all. He has two years remaining on his existing contract. Alabama, to the chagrin of their fans, elects to punt. And it will be down inside the 10-yard line, making the six is where it is down. And 
and uh, it's a 43-yard boot. Miami takes over with 4.57 to play in the fourth, and uh, let's check in with Roger Twible in our studios in New York. Roger? Okay, thank you very much, Alan. If folks want to know who's number one, if they want to contribute, they can call 1-900-339-1ABC. It'll cost you 95 cents. The AP and UPI poll at the conclusion of the regular season, that's the way they stood. The media votes on the AP poll, the coaches on the UPI poll. The last 10 years, there have been consensus national champions. The last split was in 1978. Alabama picked by the AP and the University of Southern California by UPI. We'll give you the results at the end of the Sugar Bowl game. So if you want to vote, call in right now. Al? First poll we've had with that OJ running all over the field. That's right. <laughs> From the uh, eight-yard line, Miami will try to take some time off the clock. You know, just to follow up on what we're talking about with Bill Curry, sometimes you wonder, why does anybody want to become a major college coach? It doesn't matter where it is. It's not just Alabama. Almost everywhere, there are a bunch of, there are 50-year-old adolescent alumni involved with every program. And no matter what you do, they'll never be happy. They're writing letters to the editor every week, calling the radio shows every week. Every coach has to go through it. It's amazing. And if you run this guy out of Tuscaloosa, you're dumber than, than you should be. This is a guy you ought to fight to keep. Throw yourself at this guy's feet. Hell of a coach. Wouldn't have trouble getting another job. Well, I was recruited from Miami, and <laughs> your little agent worked for Bill Curry. Get a word from Lynn Swan, Swanny. Thank you, Al. I'm with Jerry Page. Graduated from Alabama in 75. I know you're a little disappointed your team's not playing as well. Well, it's kind of quiet on our side of the field, and Miami's a super team, but... Uh, Really, Bill Curry's a class act. I'm really proud of him, and they're playing well, considering. Coming up, we've got some big golf tournaments on ABC. That's right. This Sunday, we have the Money Tournament of Champions starting at La Costa, California. It starts this year's golf for ABC. Okay. Seniors and touring pros on this in that particular tournament? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've got the best players in the world. Curtis Strain, two-time Open champion. Tom Kite, all-time lead money winner. Payne Stewart. Okay. I hope you have a lot more fun there than as an alumnus of Alabama you're having here. Thank you, Lynn. Appreciate Thank it. you. Okay. Al? All right, Lynn, second down and eight for Miami. Uh, Alabama has just spent a timeout as they try to conserve the clock here. 452, 33 to 17 is the score. The uh, Hurricanes on top. Well, we talked about Curry, and then there's Dennis Erickson, the mild-mannered Dennis Erickson from the state of Washington. He coached at, at Idaho, and then he went to Wyoming for a year and then to Washington State. And all of a sudden, he made about uh, as long a move as you can make in the lower 48, from the Palouse country of eastern Washington all the way down to South Florida. Got a couple of assistants with him. Bob Bratkowski, the offensive, Bratkowski's son, the offensive coordinator. Just Conley. In fact, there was only one retainee, Art Kehoe, from the old staff who remained. And you recall Gary Stevens was a being considered along with Erickson as a flag down in the last play and it was uh, either Stevens getting the job or going on and in fact he uh, he decided to, to join Don Shula with the Dolphins when David went to Dallas with Jimmy Johnson and there's Art standing right there the lone coach with the green jacket he's their offensive line coach and I mean really what a, de a dream come true for any coach to inherit this program I mean to walk in here normally a coach comes in and he has to he has to start building his program he has to start go looking for players I mean, Dennis Erickson and this coaching staff, they must have all locked themselves behind closed doors and said, can you believe these guys? I mean, the first time they worked them out, the first time they went on the field, they must not have believed it. Well, they, but they were smart enough to keep enough of the program in place, too. You know, there, there are coaches that can come in and uh, with, with large egos and say, hey, wait a second, I've got to put my own imprimatur on this program and do it my way and let people know it's my program. It's Bob Bratkowski on your left there, the son of Zeke Bratkowski, who was with Bill Curry when they were both at Green Bay. Second down and 12 from the six-yard line, and Erickson nearly gets caught in the end zone, comes back out to the one. Keith McCants was there to drop him at the one-yard line. Well, look at, wait till you see this effort by McCants. Kenny, if you got it, bring it up. I mean, he hurdles a blocker. Just watch this. You ask, uh, see if this guy's an athlete. Three-year football player in high school and a three-year basketball all-star who could step up basketball when he was a sophomore in high school, and he's showing you right there great athleticism. That guy is not 6'1", 205. He's 6'5", 260. Alabama takes a timeout. All right, Uncle. 
Uncle Lou, don't worry about a thing. Hold up the can, look in the camera, and tell everybody why you love the new Diet Pepsi. Action. I like this soda fine. It's a friend of mine. What? Wait, I'm sliding. I'm sliding. They made it new. So this is new. Boy, what's it cost to paint something like this? I love the bubbles in the Diet Pepsi. It's hard to compare this with a Diet Coke. This one's better than that. Do you like pickled herring? Can I go because my nephew is picking me up because he's got to take me to the bakery. And if I don't pick up that coffee ring, I'm going to... Dodge announces an automotive first. The guaranteed rebate. If these rebates go up this model year, we'll pay you the difference on Dodge's best. A thousand on Caravan. <laughs> 1500 on Dakotas, up to 1500 on Daytonas, and 2000 on full-size pickups. Now you don't have to wait to see when rebates will get better. That's the guaranteed rebate, only from Dodge. Nobody can match us. Nobody. Uh, we're back. <laughs> the Sugar Bowl, third down and 17 for the Miami Hurricanes from their own one-yard line. Alabama has one timeout remaining, and let's see if they elect to take it here, because Miami's going to have to punt. 4.02 remaining on the clock, and the Tide will take a timeout. So they spend their final one here. They are two touchdowns and two two-point conversions behind, trailing by 16. All right, let's uh, get another word from... Uh, <laughs> what is this, a post parade here? Here's Roger Twyford da, 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 of New York. Da, 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 well, thank you very much, Al. Who's number one? Uh, it looks like the uh, Chicago and Indiana area voting heavily in the early going. Notre Dame with 51% uh, right now in the poll. And you can see on down the list that uh, uh, Miami and Florida State and Colorado, if you want to vote, you call that number to see on the screen right there. And uh, it'll cost you 95 cents, 1-900-339-1-ABC. And we'll give you the final tabulations at the end of the Sugar Bowl. Right now, Notre Dame leading. Let's go back to Almar. Very strong. Very strong and affluent group of Notre Dame alumni, obviously. Kalal the punt. Talk about a lick and a half, as the saying goes. And, as, and look at this. I mean, we are talking about bouncing right back up. Gene Jelk suffers a major collision at the hands of Darren Smith. Where was the fair catch when he needed it? Oh, what a shot. This is not a game for the meek and mild-mannered. <laughs> and look at Bill Curry. He gave it a shot. He could have taken it all the way in. There's never been an offer like this before. The guaranteed rebate. Now you can get $1,000 on a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, Plymouth Laser, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible, or a New Yorker Fifth Avenue, even an Imperial. If the rebate goes up during this model year, we'll pay you the difference. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler Plymouth. No other car company has ever done that. Offer ends soon. There's just something about a Canon color laser copier. Maybe it's the way it makes drawings come alive. Or the way it captures the sharpness and detail of photos. Or it might be the fact that Canon has the world's most advanced digital technology. Whatever it is, it makes quite an impression. The Canon color laser copier. The digital difference. Call toll free. 1-800-OK-CANON. How about if we do a phone poll on whether or not you'd like to return punts? Here's Gene Jelks. Look at number 45, Darren Smith. That's as violent a collision as you'll see on a football field, and both guys got up. Alabama from the 33-yard line, and Hollingsworth gets sacked. You know, we talked about Miami tonight extolling their virtues, talking about so many of the things they've done, especially defensively. All season long, on punt returns, the opposition has returned punts for a total of two yards against Miami all season. You're not talking about a two-yard average. No. Two-yard cumulative. Hollingsworth. You know, what I, you know what I find ironic about the whole Miami-Notre Dame uh, connection here is, 
you'd be hard pressed to find two schools that dislike each other where the rivalry is more intense than that between Notre Dame and the University of Miami and yet Miami is you know they were put in the situation of needing help mm -hmm. from Notre Dame to win a national championship and not that they have won it but I certainly think that they have to be viewed as the front runner and yet they needed Notre Dame to do it for them. and of Third. course every Notre Dame Notre Dame alumnus in the country is saying hey cool that cool your jets here Dan uh, Miami hasn't won the national championship yet I just don't know how you can't give it to them. either that or they're busy dialing I mean, I've expressed my vote. How would you guys vote? I would vote for Miami, and I would vote for Miami. Miami first, Notre Dame second, Florida State third. That's right. All for one, one for all. Fourth and five from the 28. And they keep it alive and take it inside the 10-yard line. Marco Battle keeping Alabama alive. Crimson Tide out of timeouts, but they have a first and goal at the nine. And now, how about this offensive team next year only losing one guy, really? Only one starter. The guy who just caught that ball, Marco Battle. That's right. And Gary Hollingsworth back. It's his first year, really, as a varsity competitor as a quarterback, and he's done some amazing things tonight. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Hollingsworth lofting it into the end zone, and no good. Battle and McNeil were there. And it's incomplete. It'll be second down and goal. The clock down to 2.57 to play. The big question, you know, the, you mentioned 10 out of the 11 come back on offense, but the big question for Alabama is going to be McCann, the linebacker. Will he come back or not? We asked Bill Curry that question yesterday, and he knows. <laughs> well, you hear the crowd responding again. Uh, they're thinking that that was a, a tied touchdown. Blitz on second and goal, and this time it is caught for a touchdown oh, by fabulous. Prince Wembley. Great catch. And Prince, remember earlier in the game, yanked for a celebration. You can you can celebrate after that one, guy. Great That's grab. Two perfectly thrown balls by Hollingsworth. The one on the other side a moment ago, absolutely perfect, and perhaps could have been called a touchdown. And this one thrown to Wembley in dead stride. Beautiful. It'll fade away. Nothing Barry could do about it. Well, what you're looking at right here is if you make a two-point conversion, you're down by eight, and this one is, is not over. And if you're a tiebacker, you think back to two situations during this game where it appeared that Miami had fumbled the ball, but on both occasions, it was ruled down by the officials, and Miami retained possession. Vital two-point conversion here. Hollingsworth throws into the end zone, by Lamont Russell. So they're down by eight. But the problem for them is they don't have a timeout remaining. And a lot of their fans have gone home. And a lot of people that follow the Golden Dome in South Bend are going, go Tide, go <laughs> Tide, roll Tide. We'll be back for the onside kick. Help protect your plans and dreams. Our agents are the key. Together we make America work. We're USF and G. From the mountain's edge to the ocean's edge, we ensure you every day. We protect what America's made of. We cover the USA. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you, all you got to do is call 1-800-CRANK-IT. Get power back on and on and on, yeah. This is Roger Twybill in New York. Over 50,000 callers so far, and Notre Dame with 56% of the vote. So somebody's doing real good tonight. It looks like the Irish and the phone company at 95 cents a call. Let's go back to Al Michaels in New Orleans. 
All right, Roger, and here at the Sugar Bowl, it's an eight-point Miami lead, and as you can see, the Hurricanes uh, manning uh, the 45-yard line as Alabama figures to attempt an onside kick. Again, the Crimson Tide are without a timeout. They had to take all of them on defense the last time Miami had the ball. Allen Ward to kick it. He's looking for one roll and then the big high bounce. There's the about goal. 10 yards. It's loose. A great onside effort, but Miami comes up with it. Alex Johnson at his 49. And so what it amounts to right now is Miami needs one first down, and it's all over. They practice that over and over and over. You want it to take the one or two short hops, and then the ball on artificial turf. It's tough to do on a grass field. On artificial turf, takes that big, high hop. And that's exactly what they got that time. But that was perfect. Excellent work by my, my by Miami in covering up the ball. Look at that baby go. Sure-handed receivers over on that side on the part of Miami. You saw Wesley Carroll, a wide receiver. He wouldn't ordinarily be there. Alex Johnson. All the sure-handed types. And he covered it well. At the 49-yard line, if you run the ball, you just have to stay in bounds if you're a hurricane. And Conley thinking that. And Conley takes it to the 47-yard line. And again, Alabama cannot stop the clock. And in college football, when the ball is signaled ready for play, you've got 25 seconds to get it off. It's not yet signaled ready for play. And now it is. You know, I was just thinking back, you know, that two-point conversion of Alabama has had a lot of people around the country interested. Mm -hmm. 33 to 25, eight-point differential. That's right. Nine-point uh, Nine line at the beginning. Right. <laughs> at the beginning of the game. I think it opened to 10, and it was 8.5 at one point. And here's McGuire, and there's a huge first down, because that should just about do it as he takes it to the 26-yard line. Big night for McGuire, and you saw him cover up that football when he burst into the clear, knowing full well that Alabama would be trying to strip it. The young freshman from Brooklyn. What a show tonight. 21-yard gain. Again, we're going to run all the scores for you. One after the other. Tennessee, a winner at Dallas today. Florida State, very impressive victory. That's some sore eyeballs out there. Trojans ruin uh, Bo's finale. We all know about the Orange Bowl. Notre Dame by 15 over Colorado. And this one winds down with a minute 40. I guess it's only fitting that we're on the air last. We do the final game of the pros every weekend on Monday night. And this is really the end of our football season here at ABC. Our Super Bowls, our last game is a Monday night team. And uh, gentlemen, it's been another fun year. And to the guys in the truck and the cameras, you are the greatest. I'm proud to be a part of it. 21 games started to win back the 1st of August. Hall of Fame game, August 5th, I guess it was this year. And it has been fun. Some great games we've had over the year. Hurricanes of Miami uh, looking at themselves up on the, the board here at the Superdome. So it winds down. Uh, we'll go off the air, but still to be determined officially who is number one. And uh, as far as the phone call was concerned, here's Roger Twible with that update. Okay, thank you very much, Al. And uh, number one is still Notre Dame, as they're coming in with 55% of the vote, over 50,000 callers so far. The AP poll will be announced early tomorrow. 60 voters there, 50 voters in the UPI. That also will come out, so we'll know by our early evening news tomorrow night. But right now in our poll, Notre Dame with 55%, Miami with 26%. Let's go back to Al. And the Miami assistant coaches celebrating the uh, final play of the game has just been run Dennis Erickson congratulations yep first year coach and probably the coach of a national championship team tough act to follow Jimmy Johnson and he has done it with style fine candid young coach successful at Washington State now let's let's just talk for one second about tonight's game an excellent football game two class programs a lot of hard-hitting, aggressive football tonight. I, I, I thought this was a superbly played game. 20 to 17 was the score at the half. Alabama just kept fighting back and fighting back. 
and put on a whale of a fight all night long, stayed in the football game, and had a chance to tie this game up right at the very end. But Miami just too much for them. Lynn Swan is getting in position to get a word with Dennis Erickson. And as soon as he's ready, we'll go down there and we are ready for him. Okay, Coach, a great win. Congratulations. Yeah, it was an outstanding win. I'll tell you, Alabama really played well. They're a darn good football team and they did a great job of coaching. And we were very, very, very fortunate to win the football game. But, but we did. And... Uh, Puts us in pretty good shape right now. You got an eight point. You got an eight point victory. Why do you think you couldn't just pull away from this football team? Well, Alabama's a good football team. They've always been. They only lost one game, and that was to Auburn and down there. So, I mean, uh, we knew going in the game it was going to be a heck of a fight, and uh, I got to give them a great deal of credit. Obviously, the only remaining question now will be left up to the voting. Is this Miami football team number one in your mind? Yeah, I, we're number one. Just that simple, no doubt about it. Well, we'll find out, I guess, in a couple days. Yeah. Is there, would there be any reason you could even think of that they wouldn't vote Miami as the number one team in America? Not that I could think of, but I'm, uh, uh, I'm kind of prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> so our guys in the booth, they think you've earned it as well. All right, thank you, Lynn. Appreciate Congratulations. It. Thanks a lot. Okay. Appreciate it. So the Miami Hurricane. Will it be a third national championship of the decade? Clearly, they feel they are the team of the decade. And frankly, so do we. Miami wins it by eight in the Sugar Bowl. We'll be back. That's me, Christina Ferrari, after I had my baby. Since then, I lost 25 pounds in three months with the Ultra Slim Fast plan. It was easy. Ultra Slim Fast is really delicious and satisfying. I'd have a thick chocolate shake for breakfast, another for lunch, then a great dinner. I love Ultra Slim Fast. It gave me back my figure, and I feel great. Now the only baby fat in this family is on the baby. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. There's never been an offer like this before. The guaranteed rebate. Now you can get $1,000 on a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, Plymouth Laser, Chrysler LeBaron convertible, or an... I thought this was a superbly played game. 20 to 17 was the score at the half. Alabama just kept fighting back and fighting back. They put on a whale of a fight all night long, stayed in the football game, and had a chance to tie this game up right at the very end. But Miami just too much for them. Lynn Swan is getting in position to get a word with Dennis Erickson, and as soon as he's ready, we'll go down there, and we are ready for him. Okay, Coach, a great win. Congratulations. Yeah, it was an outstanding win. I'll tell you, Alabama really played well. They're a darn good football team, and they did a great job of coaching, and we were very, very, very fortunate to win the football game, but, but we did, and... Uh, puts us in pretty good shape right now. You got an eight point, you got an eight point victory. Why do you think you couldn't just pull away from this football team? Well, Alabama's a good football team. They've always been. They only lost one game, and that was to Auburn and down there. So, I mean, uh, we knew going in the game it was going to be a heck of a fight, and uh, I got to give them a great deal of credit. Obviously, the only remaining question now will be left up to the voting. Is this Miami football team number one in your mind? Yeah, I, we're number one. Just that simple, no doubt about it. Well, we'll find out, I guess, in a couple days. Yeah. Is there, would there be any reason you could even think of that they wouldn't vote Miami as the number one team in America? Not that I could think of, but I'm, uh, uh, I'm kind of prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> so our guys in the booth, they think you've earned it as well. All right, thank you, Lynn. Appreciate Congratulations. It. Thanks a lot. Okay. Appreciate it. So the Miami Hurricane. Will it be a third national championship of the decade? Clearly, they feel they are the team of the decade. And frankly, so do we. Miami wins it by eight in the Sugar Bowl. We'll be back. That's me, Christina Ferrari, after I had my baby. Since then, I lost 25 pounds in three months with the Ultra Slim Fast plan. It was easy. Ultra Slim Fast is really delicious and satisfying. I'd have a thick chocolate shake for breakfast, another for lunch, then a great dinner. I love Ultra Slim Fast. 
It gave me back my figure, and I feel great. Now the only baby fat in this family is on the baby. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. There's never been an offer like this before. The guaranteed rebate. Now you can get $1,000 on a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, Plymouth Laser, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible, or a New Yorker Fifth Avenue, even an Imperial. If the rebate goes up during this model year, we'll pay you the difference. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler Plymouth. No other car company has ever done that. Offer ends soon. Miami wins it by eight. Lynn Swan back down on the field, and let's return to Swanee right now. Thank you, Al. Uh, Keith, obviously disappointed with the loss, but the only other question outside of who would be number one in America is whether or not Keith McCant is going to be back at Alabama or turn pro. What's your decision? Have you made one? Well, I haven't made one yet. I have to sit down and look at the pluses and the minors, and right now I am enrolled in school and will be attending um, whatever the decision may be. And... Uh, I'm having the time of my life in school, even though you had a bad loss here. Um, I haven't made my mind up what I'm going to do. Money is a big consideration, obviously, with the ownership of professional football, talking about going to a percentage for salary, and they're talking about the big contracts being diminished. Has that been a part of your decision-making process? Well, it depends. It depends. You know, the university is making several million dollars, and the players aren't getting paid, so... It's a very difficult decision for me to make at where I am now. Do you have any timetable for when you're going to make that decision? No, not right now. I don't. You know, I have to, like I said earlier, I have to sit down and look at the um, pluses and the minus. Best of luck with whatever decision you make. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, Al. All right, thank you, Lynn. And uh, that's the story from the Superdome, where the Hurricanes, the team, and the coaching staff and their fans are celebrating what they feel will be a national championship with the results of the poll coming out tomorrow. Once again, the final score from the Superdome, Miami 33, Alabama 25. A promotional fee has been provided by USF&G to ABC Sports. Happy New Year, everyone. Sunday, winners from the PGA and Senior Tours meet in the Money Tournament of Champions. Final round coverage begins at 3 Eastern, Sunday on ABC Sports. The USF&G Sugar Bowl has been brought to you by USF&G. All across this country, USF&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G covers the USA. By the Chrysler Corporation, introducing our 1990 cars, minivans, and trucks. By UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. And by Shearson Lehman Hutton. When you do it better, you get to be the leader. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies.